Hello. Happy Saturday. How's it going? I think my voice cracked just now. <laughs> How are you? I, you know, I had some weird things happen with the stream today, so sorry I'm a little late. How are you guys? Happy Saturday. Let me know if you can see me since we've had so many weird things with YouTube lately, and um, I know you guys are having trouble finding me. I'm having trouble finding me. So, you know, I hope you can, and if you see anyone waiting to find us live, let them know to refresh their browser. So, that might help. So, so um, it's Saturday. Good morning, Polly. Thank you for saying good morning. How are you? How are you? Hello, Jan. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Derek. How's it going? Hello from California. <laughs> I've been to Scotland many times. I love it there. So, let's see here. We are going to make the Scout Tea, which is by Grainline Studio. And for those of you who don't know, it's like a t-shirt, but in woven fabrics rather than knits, you know? Hi, Megs. YouTube isn't working? Yeah, I know. YouTube is being a real brat. You know, um, you might try deleting your bookmarks or your browser history, at least with maybe YouTube things. You can select all the YouTube things and um, like your, yeah, like your cache. And then it might work. I'm really sorry. I have no idea what's going on. I had, I got a security alert on my phone this morning saying someone was trying to log in on my streaming account like on my on my Google account that is affiliated. This is all I use it for. So I was like, okay, maybe there's weirder stuff going on than I realized. So I had to change my password and I've had to re-log into everything. And I was like, I hope I can even stream. I hope it's all connected. So I'm really glad to see you guys. And I'm really sorry. There are a few people on YouTube seeing it, Megs. So, but I like Twitch. I just know you can't see the chat over there. Anywho, um, so yeah, we're making the Scout Tea by Grainline Studio. And if you have like a cute print and it's a, you know, woven, not a knit, maybe you don't want to sew with knits. Um, this is a really great option. It says it keeps saying live soon. Uh, refresh it, Megs. Did it, did you try that? Did you try refreshing? That's so weird. Hi, Carol. How's it going? How's the setup look, you guys? Sorry, I can't get rid of the shadow. <laughs> it's so really good. <laughs> That's how I'm making up for it. <laughs> um, and uh, it, this tea has been around for quite a few years, like seven years. Hi, Sophie, how's it going? And there's a lot of really cute variations. So if you look up at the hashtag Grainline Scout or um, hashtag Scout Tea, and then this week, uh, this month, they're doing like a Scout Tea September. And I just thought, you know, I'm going to jump on that because I need a two-part stream rather than a three-part stream because I'm leaving next week. And I thought this would be perfect. So, hi, Claire. How's it going? It's a beautiful day there. Nice. You did try that, Megs? That's so weird. Hi, Sojoy. How's it going? Good to see you guys. There's a few of you on Twitch. That's awesome. Are you guys having trouble with YouTube too? I, you know, you guys, we should just switch to Twitch full time. <laughs> I feel like, but the thing is, like, um, well, then I could download my stream and then upload it to YouTube. That might be an option. I may have to consider doing that. It took you a couple times to get on with YouTube, Jan. Yeah, you and you like the Twitch quality, Joy. I know, exactly. Me too. I like that you can zoom. You just like the image quality better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Instead of, you didn't, you didn't even try YouTube then. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear ya. Yeah, I'm really sorry, you guys. I don't really know. Let me see if I can look at the YouTube tab. It says, no data. We are not receiving data from your encoder. Well, that's crazy. No, you don't have to pay for Twitch, it's free. It is free. Um, and if you have Amazon Prime, you can um, see fewer ads. Yeah, I know, Megs. I know I, that someone said that uh, they've heard a couple other live streamers having troubles too. It took Polly five times to get on. I don't understand why. You know? 
If I had a solution, I would absolutely, I would do a video on it, on how to do it, how to get around it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find myself right now. No, by default, let's see. Oh, okay. I have so many windows up that's kind of hard for me to scroll around. I'm, not, I'm actually not gonna worry about it. If some of you can see me and some of you are on Twitch, I'm hoping that people can figure it out. I'd rather just get to doing what we want to do here. So, yeah, I, I'm so frustrated by it. I was actually uh, with um, the chat help on Streamlabs and they, I'm pretty sure are gonna say it's not us, it's them. Yeah, right, Megs, yeah. Well, and you know, um, I've applied to be affiliate and it's not approved yet, so don't worry about it. And because it's not gonna show up as an option on my channel um, until it's allowable. So thank you so much for considering me giving your Twitch Prime to me. It's like giving me a free $5 for you, which is great. Oh, that's awesome, Judith. Judith, from so over 50? <gasps> Welcome, you're like a rock star to me. You're watching on YouTube from the very beginning on your phone to chat with you. Yeah, that's how I do it too. I watch on a Roku sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always them, Jan. Exactly. Both are working. Yay. I got a little flushed. I'm so excited. Um, so anyway. So um, I was just going to like straightforward cut out my Scout tea today. And then I realized you guys might want some ideas on how to modify it or alter it. And I know it sounds really crazy, but I've never done a full bust adjustment before. Um, it's not something you see in the garment industry. It's definitely a home sewing thing. And it's not something I even heard of until a few years ago, or also known as an FBA. When people say I did an FBA on this. So that's what a, a FBA is. It's a full bust adjustment. And so I noticed that Grainline Studio posted something on their blog yesterday in regards to doing an FBA on specifically the Scout Tee. And I thought, well, hey, let's just do it together and figure it out. Hi, Vicky, how's it going? No, no, you're another Judith, okay. Oh, that's right, right, that, that's, you're totally a rock star. You made the tea house dress, that's right, that's right. That's Judith um, Rosalind, right? Ah, oh, sorry, that's awesome. How'd your tea dress come out, tea house dress come out with the Ikea fabric, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so I thought let's just do it together because I understand the principles. It's very straightforward pattern drafting techniques and we can kind of explain how, what it benefits and stuff. So the, you, most women like using an FBA if they measure their upper bust measurement and their full bust measurement and there's more than a two inch difference. Is that your t-shirt merch? No. <laughs> no, it's casual Saturday, right? I didn't do my hair and I'm just wearing a t-shirt. This is by Patchwork Threads. She does a lot of quilting specific shirts and some of them are just like a, the quilt block and rainbow colors are really cool. Awesome, okay, okay. I think I did see it, Judith. That's awesome. Yay. Yeah, we bought these shirts when we, um, me and Rayanne took our industrial machines to Stitches West one year and we set up a mini factory and we sewed live for people and we let them customize bags. We had like a, a buffet bar of cut pieces that were all partially sewn together. So like say they got this bag that had a draw handle top and then it had a clear bottom and it has a pocket. We let them pick the top they wanted, the 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 um, pocket they wanted and then the binding they wanted and then we finished it up and so we brought a bunch of like pieces sewn together that just needed like the last two steps so um, it was awesome it was so fun such a huge success my booth was so empty by the end of, end of it it was really funny because every year after that people are like oh was that not a success is that why you didn't do it and I'm like no it was a huge success but traveling our machines there was such a risk um, because they're kind of our everything and it's not like we have a mechanic on site. So um, moving the machines there was a little bit harrowing and we ended up having some bad luck on there because I, I ended up having two black eyes during that whole show and no one could tell. And it's because I got a bungee cord, the whacked in the, the nose. And then Rand did the exact same thing and she whacked herself in the mouth and her tooth went through her lip. It was, it was we were a disaster. <laughs> But we got there with the machines, got them all set up, no problem. 
And then on the way home, one of the machines fell over in the van because I had so much less merchandise. I had none, basically, <laughs> uh, that my, there was a little too much room in the trailer. So I was like, oh, I cannot take. Like, we got there, and one of the machines was just laying on its side. And so the machines, like I've told you guys, are sit in a pan of oil. And I just decided to transport them with the oil in them. And so they ended up all being fine. The machines were fine. But it was just such a huge risk, such a huge um, amount of work because I did a show in Washington, would drive home from the show, you know, unpack my bag, wash my clothes, pick out a few different things for different climate, go to the workshop, and then Rayanne will have, like, had more merch for me. I would put that in there, take all the stuff I had reserved for the next show, Stitches West, and then we had to load the machines, rent the trailer, do all that, and then get there. Like, I had one day at home. So it was just a lot. It took a lot out of me. And three years in a row, I had the weirdest things happen, like, in personally, like I had a rash that happened on my neck that ended up being pre-anaphylactic shock. And then my husband's father passed away. And then I can't remember what happened the other year. And so I was like, um, yeah, this sewing machine thing, I love doing this, but I'm not gonna do it. So, but we wore these shirts there. I got us shirts and tank tops that said things like this and we wore them all throughout. It was really fun. So anyway, that's my long, long, long story about why I have this shirt. I have a white one and I have a black one. She had tank tops, it was fun. So, hi, Malin. Hello, hello. Yeah, and moving machines was awful. Yeah, yeah, because you have to, ugh, they're so heavy. So anyway, let's try this full bust adjustment. So the principles of the full bust adjustment are that you have a bigger, a larger than two inch difference between your full bust and your upper bust. Mine is actually like about that. So I don't actually need a FBA. I'm not gonna do one for mine because I'd like to see what it looks like without. But if you need one, this is what you do. Um, I'm gonna go over it really quickly. The steps are on their website and they're very, very well explained. And they just did the post like the last couple days or maybe maybe a few days ago. Maybe the most recent one is about um, sleeves. But their whole thing is like Scout Tea September. So they're probably gonna have lots of really fun things this month, you guys. So, and the pattern was on sale as well. So I don't know if it still is or not. But first measurement you need, you're gonna need to know what, how, what this difference is, your upper bust and your full bust, right? And if it's greater than two inches, okay? So just set that number side. You need to get, kind of have to find your apex. And finding this is a little tricky in that where you decide your shoulder line is up here and where they decide the shoulder line is can be a little bit different. And so what I did was I kind of found where I feel like my shoulder should be. Don't go by the shoulder seam on whatever you're wearing because for some reason a lot of shoulder seams are towards the back. And um, traditionally your shoulder's not at the back of you, right? So I measured down to the fullest part, going this way, right? And then I actually measured the distance between here, my apexes, and that is um, how I came up with my apex. And then what I did was I measured that amount down. For me, I think it was 10 and a half. And remember, your pattern has seam allowance on it. So don't forget to take that. Oh, hi, Lisa. So take off that seam allowance. So my, you know, the seam allowance, I think, is like half inch, right? So then measure down. So that's 10 and a half. And where are you going to put this, right? So that's why I did the distance between. And then it was like, this is the center. And then I found half that distance right there to know where to put that, okay? So you need this measurement and this measurement, all right? Now you're going to take your ruler. Remember I have rulers that I can drag my pen alongside. And you're just gonna make a, a slightly downward line from there to your side seam. It's not perpendicular, it's just slightly down, downward, okay? Then you're going to make a parallel line to center front from this point down. And what I did was I was like, okay, this is three and a half, this three and a half, and then I marked it and I just drew a straight line, which doesn't look, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Next, you're gonna draw a line roughly halfway in the middle of your armhole. Remember, your armhole has seam allowance, but it doesn't matter if you, you know, if it's, it's at top and bottom. Um, I am uh, uh, gonna cut the size 12 out on for me. 
So I actually trimmed off all the other sizes. So you're not seeing all the sizes of the Skyway tee right here. You're just seeing the size 12. And so I just kind of roughly did my line there. I didn't do it to the notch. That notch goes to the smallest size, which is the zero. It just looks like it goes to the notch, but that's about right. Okay, you're not, you're, you just need um, a hinge, that's all. So then next you're going to, hopefully I'm remembering all the um, steps correctly. Next you're gonna cut up this straight parallel line, all right? Go through the apex. And remember that there, this is one thing they tell you to go all the way, but except like go all the way up to the edge there, but not through it. But I'm gonna tell you one little thing to do different. Yeah, you could totally make the shirt longer, Megan. You're gonna go up to the seam line, okay? Which is a half inch away from this cut edge, right? And you're gonna do the same thing here, half inch away. I'll tell you why in a second, okay? And now you're going to cut up to that point again. So remember, you leave it connected. Do your best. If you go through, it's okay. Leave it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can go on that line. You can go there. It doesn't matter. You just need it to release. And now you have these hinges, okay? Right? So here's your. You see people post these, right? Okay, the reason you don't go all the way to the edge there is, especially on the armhole, if you went all the way to the edge and then you open this up, you would be making your seam line longer and your sleeve isn't gonna fit the same. So you just don't wanna change this measurement here. We're putting the dart here, not here. All right, so actually this one, yeah, so is this one, wait a minute, did I just do that wrong? I just did that wrong. I just did that totally wrong. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, rewind. I, I went the wrong way right here. That's so funny. So that's what you do now that you've cut it wrong because I just told you to do it wrong. <laughs> told you, I've never done one of these. We're learning together. All right. Really, I just need it. I need it connected there. So you're gonna cut from the side seam to your apex almost all the way. And mine, I'm gonna reinforce mine with a little tape right here, like that. You just need a, a little bit hanging on right there. There's no seam line there, you don't have to worry about that, okay? Oops. All right, so now I was like, wait, when I see people do these, I see these little funny things and mine didn't look the same. <laughs> okay, so here you go. Now, the, to know how much you're going to spread this, because you're gonna spread this right here, a parallel distance, and to find that amount that you need to do right there is, this is the only spot you have to do math and it's pretty simple. So I like the way Grain Line um, explains this because most, um, most people do an FBA if there's greater than a two inch difference between your upper bust and your full bust, right? So let's say um, my upper bust is a 36 and my full bust is a 40, right? That's a four inch difference. So there's two inches extra there. So now some people take the entire four inches and that's what they divide in half to get this measurement here and then they would spread it two inches. But grain line makes an excellent point. It's already engineered, the pattern is already engineered for a two inch difference. So all you need to add right here is the excess. So whatever you're over that two inches in your, between your upper and your full bust. So say it's two inches as well. So remember 40, 40 minus 36 is four inches. Take out two of those inches, you have two left. And you're gonna split that in half for your left side and your right side. So you're gonna make this one inch wide. So. Let's clip this a little bit nicer right up there. All right. So now um, my grid on my table is one inch wide. So here you go. Here's a nice visual, right? Okay. So now what you have is a as uneven hems right here, okay? Oh, I forgot to tell you, you need to draw a line right, just somewhere around here when, you're, when your pattern's all together. 
I forgot because there's a lengthen and shorten line on this pattern that I was gonna use, but I did this dash line so that you would know it has nothing to do with the FBA as far as creating the dart, but it has everything to do with how to remember to create a straight hem. So, so now you've got your amount. So say your full bust is um, 53 and your upper bust is um, 49 and a half, right? So now you have three and a half inches. So take out two, you have one and a half inches you need to deal with, divide it in half, then you would put this three quarters of an inch apart, okay? And then it's gonna naturally release all right here, okay? So you haven't changed your armhole. All you've done is added a little dart here and a little fullness right through the bust. Now this is gonna make the hem a little bit wider right here. I would definitely do a muslin if you feel like you're like, ooh, it's looking a little too drapey down there, you know? So now what you're gonna do is true up your hem. If you wanna keep the original hem length, you can cut your paper here and then line it up to this here, right? So, you know, you would cut this here, cut this off. Oops, I don't have all the layers of paper there. And then line it up with that line right there. Okay. Make sure you keep your center front lined up. And now you have your piece ready to go as far as like now you're ready to make your dart. So let's, um, let's put a little bit of paper behind this. You guys are still there, right? I didn't lose you. You guys are really quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> we just jumped right in there with the FBA. No big deal. <laughs> Let me know you're still there, you guys. I'm so um, paranoid about streaming lately. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, guys. I'm really confident in some areas of life, but um, in the others, like this, <laughs> like streaming. <laughs> Ah, you're sometimes here, but you're lost, kids. <laughs> Fair enough. Me too. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to first anchor the pieces. Um, this piece right here, it's kind of your central piece, right? So now let's get this back to um, where we want it. It's, it's better just to do this on top of a piece of paper so that you don't have to pick it all up and move it again like I just did. But I really wanted you to be able to see the grid underneath. Hello, Maribel, how's it going? Hi, Deb D. I think I saw another Deb say hi earlier. I forgot to say hi. And hi, Kits. You made yours with a one inch SBA, Lisa. And how did it come out? What'd you think? <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's add my, I'm doing a, so when you say a one inch FBA, does that mean, um, are you calling this amount the, the number? For the FBA, like say I did three quarters of an inch here, would I do a three? Would would I say I did a three quarter inch FBA? Is that what people are referring to when they say that? Because um, I don't really know. I'm not really familiar with how people talk about these. All right, so now we have this anchored. Don't worry about that yet. Don't let it. Don't let it stress you out or anything. Just just do this. Yeah. When, okay. So so when people say and I did a two inch FBA, they did two inches here. Okay. Good to know. All right, now let's um, line this up. We have this line and we have that right there. It's not gonna probably be perfectly straight because little micro errors add up. All right, so now we're ready to create the dart. And look at our hem is nice and lined up here, right? And now all this is just filled in. You don't even have to worry about it at all. That's filled in too, just pretend. <laughs> okay, so let's see, we need, um, we'll cut off this piece of paper here. Let's pick it up. So this uh, pattern was, interestingly, was drafted for a B cup, I'm pretty sure. I'm a double D, but I don't have a FBA that's bigger there. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't, but you say the total number. Okay, so if you did, if a two inch FBA would be one inch, one inch melon, that's what you think? That seems kind of, that actually does seem kind of like it would make sense because that would be your difference up here. All right, so now to create the dart, here, how about I fill in this little guy here so it all looks cool, pathetic. I almost left my door open today, but um, I didn't want that Rottweiler to scare the crap out of me again. <laughs> he's such a big sweetie. <laughs> but he's so, like, quiet. He just kind of ambles along, and all of a sudden he's just there. All right, so um, you're going to fold this dart leg to that dart leg. And what I like to do is fold my top up here. I try not to go through past that mark there. I'm gonna fold it down to that dart leg because this is the way you would sew it with the excess of your dart pointing up. Although um, I think we all learned that um, in curvier sewing that uh, like cashmerette, they like the the dart, foam, dart excess to be pushed down because they think it looks more slimming. Oh, really, Lisa? You're adjusting yours. Roddy? What's Roddy? Hi, hello. I said hi, Kits, right? I didn't say Roddy. Whatever. What's that? <laughs> All right, so now you are you can take a tracing wheel if you have one, or you can cut this edge right here. And now you're going to magically have the shape of your dart right there. Sometimes it pokes out, and sometimes it doesn't. Hi, Jilly. How's it going? So there, now you have your dart and you need to mark your legs here. Um, it's not gonna be this long, I don't think though. Let's see what they recommend. I, I I, mean, as long as you're backed off of your apex, actually that can be the dart right there. I put some notes online. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's just the whole dart. Yeah, 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 that's it. So right here, this is your whole dart and so that's your end point. It's a really long dart. There's my screw punch. Because that's backed away from my apex, I'm totally fine with that um, being the tip of my dart. Here's the apex right here. It is backed off. Oh, Roddy. Yeah. <laughs> Rottweiler. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you were here that day, kids. I was sitting at my sewing machine, and he walked in, and I didn't know it. And I could just see, a, like, something, like, black moving, like, just a little bit of it above the edge of my table. Like, I could just see a, a, over the side of my table. Yeah. 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 So, I would definitely sew a muslin. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I think this could be a little low. It would be, like, right here. But I don't mind a dart being kind of in the shadow of my boob. So, it's all right. That was, that's doing an FBA. Um, and then, like I said, it's on their blog. Yeah, it was kind of funny. I was like, <laughs> I love dogs. Like, I'm not afraid of anything. I, literally nothing when it comes to animals. And all animals love me. And I think that's because I just have no fear. Even when people are like, oh, you should back up. Their dog will come up to me and go, you know, oh, where you live, it could have been a black bear. Do they wander in? Oh, my God. My turkeys used to do that. Yeah, he is such a big galump. He's so cute. And he, you know, he just thinks he owns this whole lot here. <laughs> I told my husband, I was like, you should see his path of, the, of how he checks his whole perimeter. It's hilarious. So... I can't remember his name. Oh my gosh, really, Megan? That's hilarious. That's a big poodle. <laughs> hey, Terry, how's it going? All right, so um, all right, so that's doing FBA. You've always, well, you guys have always asked for that, and I just thought I'd throw that out there and do that for you. So there is my scout to you now with the FBA. I guess I could try use. I could use this and try it. I don't have a two inch difference though bigger than two inch difference but I'm definitely a double D I'm not a B so I don't know how that works out the whole uh, world of fitting 
boobs <laughs> is a very big like science you know there's just so many variables you know um, and I did work in a place where we did like triathlete gear and um, running gear and stuff and I, I sadly I have to say like there wasn't a whole lot that they talked about with it he's a hero he's a that's a big poodle for being a lap dog, Megan. <laughs> my turkeys used to walk in, and my chickens. They'll just walk right into an open door. And one time I walked up to my back door, and I saw that it was it was a sliding glass door, and there was a wheelchair ramp going up to the sliding glass door. And I saw my sliding glass door was open, and I was like, oh, no. And I look in there, and all of our turkeys were on my dining room table, which was, like, right there. And they were, they were all just hanging, like two of them were perched on chairs. I literally walked away for like five minutes and my daughter walked out and left the door open. And I, you know, they startle and they're, when they're big, they're big, turkeys are really big. And so I walked in there and I was like, oh shoot. And so I learned my lesson because I've seen them there before not to be like, get out here because they would have just like ran right into the sliding glass door trying to get out they would have freaked out you know so um i kind of had to i think i went around to the front of my house and walked through and kind of shoot them out but um, one time i did have that that stared and there five minutes they pooed everywhere you know so <sighs> yeah sewing cup sizes compare bus to over bus bra sizes compare best under yeah that's a, that's a good point, Malin. That is such a good point. Ooh, Terry, look at you. Turkeys are funny. That's awesome, Terry. You're going to be teaching us soon. Teach me, teach me. I love learning what the newest stuff is. You have wild turkeys. I love wild turkeys. Ours looked like wild turkeys. They were heirlooms. <laughs> Yeah, actually, so that happened to my husband. He was at a soccer. He goes to these uh, soccer games in Sacramento um, for the for the minor league team, and he stays right there. And it's on the river, and there's a path. And so in the morning, he'll like go on a walk. And he said one day he was following this group of turkeys for the longest time, and they were kind of looking over their shoulder at him. They were on the path. That was pretty funny. Okay, so that's how we do the FBA. And so now I'm going to talk about variations on the Scout tee because if you look at the hashtag, there's so many really cute variations. My fabric is really, really sheer. I actually don't think it's the most appropriate fabric for this top, but I think I can, I think it could be. The only thing is it's really sheer. And I'm not one of those people that just wears a bra under sheer fabric and calls it good. I'm, I'm a little more modest than that, but this is it. This is the, this is the wrong side. This is the right side. So um, it is really sheer. I got this at Hearts Fabric um, and it's printed and it has this really great woven, you know, stripe going through it. Looks as usual, terrible on camera. When I saw it in person though, I was like, that looks like ready to wear fabric that I was pretty excited about. Um, and you guys, I wanted to tell you that Hearts gave you guys your own discount code. So if you ever wanna order online with them, it's so so 10 and you get 10 percent off so feel free to use that that would almost cover shipping pretty sure body slope that's awesome that's so great terry <laughs> yeah megan exactly you have to give them white space they spook easily my problem with my turkeys was that um because they were an heirloom breed they didn't get overly fat really quickly um they were more of a free range variety and their wings could easily carry them up into a tree they would stay lighter and their wings were so huge and i couldn't keep clipping their wings they were just getting too big like i couldn't i would hold them upside down and trim their wings and they were getting too big for my arm to hold so or even laying them on the ground they were just getting too big so they would roost on the houses right around me and including mine and one night I didn't go out there in time to put them back in the pen or I got home like at 5 15 and you know they were like okay it's getting a little dark they get out they went up there they would not come down they had to stay the whole night out there so yeah so yeah isn't that cool hearts fabric gave you guys your own discount code they really have a fantastic variety of um 
garment specific fabrics. And if you don't see something online, you can even call them and ask because they can't even have everything on there. If you're ever near Santa Cruz, I highly recommend going there. There's, you're gonna walk away really happy. There's a lot, great, great selection. And really it's just such an enthusiastic crowd there and really helpful. Um, I feel like fabric stores, tell me if I'm wrong, to get a have a kind of a bad rap a lot of times a lot of people walk in and they feel inferior they feel like people make them they're not good enough to sew there and then they don't want to ever go back right yeah i'm pretty sure they ship everywhere yeah yeah i know and so um but when i was there i didn't tell him who i was not that i'm anybody you know there's a ton of great sewers out there i'm i'm just a regular old person and i they had like a school they're visiting and there was a few women and they were getting a little tour and the the way they treated them was just so great to see and i just saw that repeatedly there they were really encouraging and very interested in what you're doing and everything so um i really like that i think i feel like fabric stores can get a really bad vibe sometimes and i've definitely been in plenty of those stores and I just think, okay, I'm just not going to buy anything here. Why are you treating people like this? No one's better than anybody. We're all equal. That's how I feel. So, um, but yeah, so, so, so 10, SEW, SEW 10, you get 10% off. And this is where I got this. I got this at Hearts Fabric. And I got, I get a lot of my fabrics from there. So, so because it's sheer, this is, I, I, I was working on a lot of little sketches of this little top. So this is a basic t-shirt. Um, I'm definitely going to make it a little more cropped so it doesn't get hung up on my butt back here and pool. I don't like it when shirts pool back there. I would like something a little like like casual to wear with jeans kind of cuffed with, um, you know, some vans or just some sandals or something. Bye, Carol. See you later. So um, I know like this looks like delicate and pretty and maybe I could do like a kind of a fancy blouse, but that's not really what I'm going for. I'm going for something a little cuter, you know? So I was thinking there's a few ways you could go with this. You could do a Peter Pan collar. That's not even functional. You could do a flutter sleeve and maybe even like change the hem where there's like a little overlap piece, you know? You have fabric lint. <laughs> right so joy i know like it's like ugh. um and then i kind of started getting a little closer to what i'm looking for so what i'm thinking is um keeping just the yoke sheer up here and then lining the lower half so i don't have to worry about wearing a camisole underneath it and that way if i did that i could even do like a scalloped hem because then i could have it faced which would be easier to deal with the scallops if they were faced rather than, um, you know, like I could just do like a facing that goes across the end just here, but then you'd see a stitch line across and it would be, the fabric would be um, not see-through here and see-through everywhere else, you know? You could do a high-low, yeah, yeah. So another idea I had was doing um, a, a rounded hem, not the kind that does, like this is the side seam, so this side, this, uh, this curve goes up to the seam and comes down rather than like, like a, a Oxford goes like this. See there, how there's a swoop right here and you get right angles here. You don't here. So I was thinking that would be really cute, Megan, kind of like on the Cali shirt dress and the Melolo, but, um, they both have this right here. They have this swoop and then this way you wouldn't have this like gap right here it would come to a point right here, you know? And then you could do the front one length and the back a different length. Um, you could do a little flutter sleeve. And then I was thinking, what about, um, oh yeah, so this one was without the yoke seam, but you, you can see my yoke seam. I meant to draw it only on here. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking is, I'm kind of liking this one a lot. But then I like the idea of a scallop hem. And either way, I'm going to do it sheer on the top up here, and then a yoke seam, and then the bottom lined, and then the sleeves will be sheer as well. So what do you guys think? I think I really want to sew a scalloped hem, 
But I think this would look better on me. <laughs> In this fabric especially. So maybe I'll go this way. So I'm gonna add a yoke seam. I'm gonna change my sleeve a little bit to be fluttery and short. And I'm gonna change the hem. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Kind of ambitious. That's a lot of changes to the uh, the vanilla scout tee. Yeah, I think so too, Malin, but that's why I was gonna line it. Curved hem, all right, yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because I was thinking, Malin, if I only did the scalloped hem and the whole thing was still sheer, it would be so hard to do that. It would You would see it too. Yeah, maybe that's it, Kits. The scallops would look better in a less busy fabric. Yeah, I think you're right. It would show off the scallops more. Plus the scallops might look crooked if the print, the motif print, isn't like perfectly lined up with it. You like the high-low? Okay. All right. All right, well, let's do this. Um. Yeah, I didn't, I don't want a full bust on my thing though, so I'm gonna take this out. <laughs> I meant to trace this off before I started and I just realized I didn't trace this off. So, this is how you take out a full bust adjustment. <laughs> All right, so. There we go. All right, where is my tape? Has anyone made the uh, scout before? Am I, am I the last one to the scout party? I've seen it before, but um, I was like, eh, I don't know how the um, back works, you know? Like I, 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 I am always suspicious of something cooling in my back because I really don't like that and really what I need to just do is just modify the pattern so it doesn't do that you know hi Elizabeth how's it going yeah. <laughs> you're not last anymore now Lisa <laughs> oh it doesn't come in your size kids oh that's a good point I didn't even look at the size offering I should let I always try and let you guys know that so yeah, this only goes up to a size 44 inch bust, 37 inch waist, and 47 inch hip. It wouldn't be hard to grade this a few sizes up, but um, more than that, you might want to start with a different block. Yep. That's a good idea, Malin. I think you could do it. I did a FBA at the beginning, Eliza. How deep is the armhole? Ding, 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 right? I know, you and I are like, what's up with the armhole? I don't know. I could, com I should compare it, huh? Maybe I will um, compare it to, what can I compare it to? Let's compare it to, what do I have? Hmm. I don't want to compare it to my t-shirt because that's for knits. <laughs> Thanks, Eliza. Yeah, it's I do it right at the beginning, Eliza. So you won't even have to wait. I just we just decided, Heather, uh, to do um because my fabric is a little busy, but and it's see-through. So this is my plan. I'm actually doing kind of a bit. It's really see-through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a yoke seam in. Right here across the top. I'm gonna line the bottom part. And then this will be sheer. The sleeves will be sheer. And then the bottom will be lined. And I'm gonna do this um, scooped hem. But this style scoops in, that's the side seam, that's the front, that's the back. This style where it comes to a, a wait, a, like point at the side rather than it doing this. Cause I don't want it to be really far apart right here, like the Melolo. I'd rather it be like this, you know? Yeah, really, Lisa? 
What did you find that was challenging to, to um, fit on it? I, this was kind of what I came here to do, Heather. I was like, I'm going to do sheer with a yoke seam and a scalloped hem. But I keep looking at this silhouette over here, and I'm like, I kind of like the way this looks with this fabric. You know? Plus, curves look a little better on me as far as, like, proportion. You know? So I'm going to do a few things. The yoke seam is going to be the easiest, um, and uh, we should just do that one right off the bat. I even... Got myself some paper to do it on. I'm also not going to do it this long. Um, I have this number here for that reason. And then we need to check the uh, armhole. Yeah, I know, Heather. That's why I was going to line it. I really wanted the scalloped, and I was like, well, if I don't line it or face the hem, I can't do the scalloped. And if I do, you'd see the facing through, and it would be like solid white right here and then sheer everywhere else. So I was like, well, now that I'm lining the whole thing, I could scallop it. But then um, I think they had a good point. I think the fabric's too busy for the scallop. I just wanted to do the scallop, and I wasn't paying attention to, like, what would be better for the fabric. So um, let me look at my pattern rack. Let's see if I have an armhole I can compare it to. I'm thinking that uh, if I can see what the the willow tank looks like, I could get an idea. Oh, getting the neck opening? Okay. Let's see. That's frame line. Oh, I know what I can compare it to, Malin. I can compare it to the uniform tunic. Let's see here. So I want to see, um, classically, the um, grain line armholes are a little tight on me. <laughs> I think this is going to be it. So let's see. And I, I dropped the armhole on the willow tank and I think on the uniform tunic, three quarters of an inch. Oh, the neck opening is wide. Interesting. Oh, you just made the Cielo? And the neck was wide on that too. Ah. Wait, isn't that what I'm doing? Oh, I'm doing the Cielo wrap. That's right. All right, okay. What is this? This is the hem, hem, sleeve. Here we go, bodice. Facing, facings, and let's see here. Let's compare. This is the front. It's a v-neck. Now, if you're comparing patterns with the same pattern company, line it up at the shoulder. The shoulder and the center front, these two spots. Oh, that's interesting. Did I do a bigger, what the heck? What size is this is come in? Do, come in. Why aren't there sizes on here? Oh, zero. Oh, the uniform's much closer, okay. The grade is much bigger. Interesting. And the armhole is bigger on this uniform tunic. So if I were to line up 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I did a 12 on the uniform tunic. And it's a little smaller, which makes sense because it's a t-shirt. So um, let's line up the 12 with this. And look at that. All right. So I'm definitely going to drop it but the grade is so different I wonder why that's so interesting now I want to like study that I promise I won't go down that rabbit hole <laughs> I'm gonna think about it. it's gonna come to me why that is that way okay let's put these away Someone was asking me on YouTube about how to do a lift in the sleeve uh, in the comments. That person's not here, right? I can't remember who it is. Um, I 
I wish I had a lackey to transfer all my patterns to M Manila. <laughs> but I'm the lackey around here. <laughs> I'm going to put this aside so I don't shove it in there too hard, but I'm worried about these little facings. Okay. All right, Malin, we're dropping it three quarters. Thanks, Claire. Do you think the longer sleeve just above the elbow would work with this pattern? Yes. I do, actually. And they just did a blog post on that, Joy. Um, and it's like a three-quarter. They have a longer and a three-quarter, I think, sleeve and a cuffed sleeve. They may increase the girth a little bit. I actually didn't look at the posts. So you might see what they suggest on that. So, All right. Um... Do I just, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to alter this pattern here so we can see it, you know? Oh, but I need the yoke. That's why. All right. So let's, uh, let's, I'm going to drop my armhole. Um, cause I do find the armholes to be a little bit tight. I'm going to go there where I, where I marked there. And so I'm going to go by the line that I'm, I'm going by the size 12 right here. So just ignore all my other lines. Like this, and I will have to adjust my sleeve. So it's almost an inch, it's about seven eighths of an inch. Back armhole's pretty shallow this way. Let's cut it off. Yeah, I just go for it, you guys. They extended it from the arm's eye instead of extending from the end of the sleeve as drafted. Oh, you mean from the underarm? Yeah, that sounds about right. It's about the same thing. I think I know what you mean. Let's make sure our side seams match. Could lose like maybe a fat sixteenth of an inch here, which is probably the width of my marker. <laughs> Pattern drafting with markers with Ceramy, <laughs> where all of your lines can be one eighth of an inch off. <laughs> so, um, what are you saying, Eliza? You're saying um, that they. Extend it from here. What did you say? Extend the sleeve down from the arm eye instead of extending from the end of the sleeve is drafted. So from here rather than here. But it's the same thing, right? I think I'm missing what you're saying. Um, this, you can see this has a little angle right here and a little bit of curve. So that means that it's going to fit your arm a little bit. If you want a boxier look, you're going to have to straighten out the um, underarm and straighten your hem up a little bit. This is just a little bit more of a slimmer, slimmer look. All right, so now we have our bigger armhole. Let's measure. Let's fix our thing, like make our size changes, and then we'll do our style lines. All right, so my um, back armhole, including seam allowance, is 11 and 3 quarters, which equals, um, whoops, 10 and 3 quarters without the seam allowance. And then um, let's measure our front. Now, what I should have done is measure what it was before. Let's see if we can figure out 
um, what it was before. This, is, this would be a great cheater way to figure out how much you need to add. And uh, more importantly, to find out how much ease was in the sleeve. Oh, straight down without shaping. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, because you're going to have to add a little bit to the circumference. So that the woven fabric doesn't get hung up. So that's about 11 and 11, including this weird little thing right here. So it's three quarters of an inch bigger now. So let's measure the back sleeve, compare all three. So now what I'm doing is figuring out, well, how much ease, oh, that's right, they do their sleeves backwards. It's funny. Let's see. And you measure it to the notch, which is 10 and 5 eighths. So there was only about, I mean, like I'm, I'm definitely doing quick and dirty measurements right now, you guys, with all those lines, with my curved ruler. So yeah, that's like about 10 and 5 eighths ish. Um, and then, uh, what did I say the original, the original um, armhole was 11, right? 11. So it's only 3 eighths of an inch bigger on the back which probably means the front was three eighths of an inch bigger because it's usually the same amount, which is only three quarters of an inch. So we actually probably could use a little bit more ease. I wonder if I can find my, let's see here. Let's measure the front and compare. Now I'm really curious. I'm sorry, you guys, I get really hung up on the pattern drafting stuff and I really love it. <laughs> Well, I'll do our, myself and you a favor by using removable tape this time. All right, so let's measure this armhole the way before I um, chopped it up, because that's I'm a butcher. You know me. Let's get it on there a little better. There we go. So I'm measuring it on the half inch line. If one of you guys tells me it's five eighths of an inch, I'll probably be like, oops. So this was nine and three quarters. And the sleeve to the notch, that's the shoulder line. It was nine and three quarters as well. What the heck? All right, well, I'm adding ease to mine. Yeah, I'm adding ease to mine. There's uh, no way I'm not going to have ease. I have to for the, the fullness of my bicep, you know. Let's take this off. Let's triple check our measurement. You can, like, I, when I'm doing a lot of sleeves and a lot of armholes and sleeve measurements, I typically only remove the seam allowance from the shoulder for my measurement. That way, because this right here to the edge would be, you know, this right here to the edge, you know? It doesn't matter which way you do it, just be consistent. And this is why I keep triple checking is because I haven't worked a lot with sleeves lately. So I keep doubting where I'm measuring from up here. I'm like, did I include it or not? Let me measure again. Wait, did I include it or not? <laughs> All right, so now our measurement for our armhole without seams, SA is seam allowance in my lingo for me, um, is 10 plus inches, it's like 10 and a 16th. I always call a 16th plus. All right, and so now our front armhole is exactly that, right? So it measures perfectly in there now, but I want ease, I have to have ease for the gush of my bicep, right? So let's measure our back armhole. And I get 11 and three quarters plus minus the one inch for the half inch seam at the shoulder, half inch seam at the side seam. So it's 10 and three quarters, and that's what I still have there. And then the back armhole is 10 and five eighths, so it's almost the same. So we're going to need to add our 
ease. And we can do this a few different ways. I think I'm gonna do it a little bit trickier of a way and add it through the cap right here. Cause this is where I want the ease to happen. Cause the easy thing to do would just be to extend the underarm to, to add that ease, but that's not correct, you know? So I'm actually just gonna, I think I'm gonna make, I can't even remember if this is the proper way to do it, but I'm going to just do it in a couple spots. I'm gonna do it an inch away from this. Well, actually, maybe I'll do it from the. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat my shoulder notch as my center of my sleeve because this right here is where you go to the shoulder seam on the garment. The grain line is typically it's probably this actually. Let's see where their center of their sleeve is. The Usually this notch is a quarter of an inch forward of center. This is about a half inch forward of center. And I wanna add the same amount of ease front and back. So it's consistent. I don't really wanna get fancy here. So let's see here, I'm gonna do it about an inch and an eighth and then another inch and an eighth and same here. Inch and an eighth. And I'm not being very scientific, but I'm just gonna do that. Um, I would really like, I, I'm actually not gonna worry about the hem. I know I'm going to add a little to the hem, but I'm actually fine with that because I'm going to change the sleeve anyway. I'm just gonna do this so it's a little faster. So I'm gonna go all the way to my hem line there. But if you are wanting to maintain this exact hem, go to your seam line and then clip up to it a little bit and that'll release it for you to be able to slash and spread. All right. All right. So right now all I'm doing is adding to the cap to get a little bit of um, uh, ease across the gush of the bicep. And this paper isn't big enough. Just, uh, let's raise it up a little bit. I don't know why I'm being so conservative. <laughs> Let me get it up higher. Here we go. Here we go. You can tell I'm pretty hard on my patterns. I always make final copies. That's why. All right, we'll get that there. And then we'll just seat this one here. And then I'm just going to um, make it so that I can slash and spread all these. Dang it, why do I, I don't know why I'm taping this, I'm sorry. This is, I never do, I don't know why I did that. Why am I taping that? Okay, there we go. That's fine to be taped up there. You need this released down here. You need to go up to your slit right there. All right, so now see, we can open up our sleeve. It's okay if it falls off like that. We can tape it on there. Let's go a little bit right there. All right, so now I need to add, uh, decide how much I wanna add, and typically one and a half inches is the um, full amount that you want in ease, and I'm going for it. I, I really like my sleeves to be comfortable. One of my pet peeves is feeling really tight through here. Um, and I think that just must be the fit of me and the way um, I like things and I move around a lot. So I'm just gonna add three eighths and three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, which is three quarters, three quarters, which is an inch and a half. So that's all I'm gonna do. So let's see, we can do this this way. And you're gonna do it on the seam line, not the edge.
Uh, you know why I'm not Malin? Um, only because, because um, that's such a great question, you guys. Like, why wouldn't I just widen the whole sleeve? Because maybe it would be tight all the way around. It probably could. And I would recommend that, like, if you're someone who has a lot of constriction through your arms, like Malin and I do, um, I am going, well, I want, I want this, the ease back in the shoulder cap, Malin, and then... If you find that your bicep is a little bit tight in a lot of sleeves, especially since this is a woven shirt and it's supposed to be like a t-shirt look, the only reason I'm not doing that right now is because I plan on making this a little bit of a flutter sleeve right here. So I'm actually going to add, I'm going to change this quite a bit, you know? So that's the only reason, Malin. So all right, so you want to add that three, the, the amount on the seam line. Seam line's about half inch down there. But I'm also just showing, like, if you wanted to do this and you don't want to add to your bicep, this is how you do it. So now you have your new sleeve. But if you want to add to the bicep, you could just keep these parallel, these slits parallel, and just move them. And, and you could do your slits straight down parallel to the grain line and then just open it up. Just kind of basically cutting your sleeve up and then going, you know. But right now, all I'm doing is adding one and a half inches total to the cap. I don't even know if you can see my pencil, can you? And I, I feel like I could have done a better job actually getting these slits a little bit more consistent away from each other because remember, like, I, I kind of did a rookie mistake where I um, left this wider than these it's kind of like when you're placing buttons and buttonholes <laughs> and you um keep trying to figure out the distance between your buttons and you do it by the number of buttons when it's really the spaces between the buttons so it's not going to be a huge difference and it's not like i'm drafting this pattern for a professor or my boss because i'm the boss right and, you know, making a muslin, always recommended. <laughs> All right, so now I have my new sleeve and you would blend in these lines. I'll use a red pen. Um, you can, if you find that the, like this line is here and this one is here, right? It's a little bit higher. Uh, there, you could just kind of raise the cap a tiny bit to kind of smooth all that out. Don't do it a ton. And now you'd want to measure this and make sure that you have your one and a half inches um, in there. Not too much, not too little. I I'm pretty confident in easing a lot in my cap. Not too worried about it. I know I added three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, which is an inch and a half total. So now I have my new sleeve. Right? And I'm going to just make a copy of this for my variation so that I can use this next time I go to use this pattern. Rather than ruining my sleeve pattern completely, even though I can print out another one because I did do the PDF version, you know. I don't have my recycling bin here. It's really bugging me. So let's just put a bunch of tape down, which makes it nice and stout. I'm not shy about tape in pattern drafting. <laughs> I always tape the back too because there's nothing like um, thinking you have the whole thing taped and then really what happens is when you cut it up you cut off the part that's taped right <laughs> you're not going to do that here but say you'd only taped it here and here <laughs> then you'd cut it off and it would fall apart <laughs> so uh, always tape it to the back as well and then um, cut out your pattern piece I would always do it with scissors, but I'm just going to be very visual about it. Which one's my line? There it is. All right, and we have our new sleeve. There's lots of ways to do sleeves, but not all of them work. Definitely try it out. See if it works for you. It's a tricky part of the body to fit. It's just as tricky as boobs. 
What does this mean? I feel like, yeah, right? I feel like the, a lot of the Indies are graded differently. Um, what does this mean? What, what all I did just now was added ease to the cap right here. So that, you know how when you put in a, a sleeve in a garment and you have to put in a few, like one or two rows of easing stitching across the cap, even though there's no gathers in the sleeve, you have to ease the cap into the armhole. When I dropped my armhole, because I just dropped my armhole almost an inch, because I find the arm, these armholes to be a little tight. And I knew when I did that, it was gonna change the measurement of my armhole, right? And my sleeve sews to that. So if I want to use the exact same sleeve, I'm gonna have to add back what I took out right here. There isn't a lot of ease in this sleeve to begin with, so I just lost all of it by taking, by dropping my armhole and making it bigger then the sleeve would have been like fitting perfectly and I, I want it to have extra. I want the sleeve length right here, the seam length on the sleeve to be longer than the one that it sews to so that I can ease it so that I have some, some room to move right here. Now, if you wanted gathers in your sleeve, you would do the exact same thing, but more drastic. You have to go past what you want. And usually um, there's a good ratio to use for gathers so you measure that distance, like say you want to add gathers and you want the gathers in your sleeve to be from like here. This is your front, this is your back, right? Overlap it. Say you just want the gathers of your sleeve. You don't want gathers all the way down your armhole, right? That would be weird. Um, you don't really see that. And you're, you, 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 there are styles like that, don't get me wrong, um, but it's a totally different look than what I'm talking about. So if you just wanted the gathers and the cap of your sleeve right here, take this measurement and then multiply it by 1.5 or 2, depending on how many gathers you want. And then that's, that excess, the amount it needs to measure that's over what it sews to is what you add right here. Am I throwing a lot at you guys? I'm in a pattern drafting mood. I'm trying to dial it back, sorry. I'm getting kind of focused. <laughs> um, all right, so do we understand where I'm at now? So now I just have my sleeve, right? I just have my sleeve. Um, and Malin's right, why wouldn't I? Let's check this around my bicep right now because this is, you know, it's kind of close, but not not too close, right? This is the back of the armhole, by the way, but still. Um, I think Malin's right. I could use a tiny bit, but it's if I was keeping this sleeve, maybe I would add uh, about three quarters of an inch there. If a sleeve fits really well, um, <laughs> Awesome, I'm glad you guys. I am gonna cut today, I'm just cutting today, Lisa. Hopefully, it's already, I've already been live for an hour and I haven't even gotten to the cutting part. We actually don't have to cut it for you guys, we could just do this part. Um, if a sleeve fits really, really well, you don't need a lot, you don't need to add a lot of extra beyond. As long as it's articulated beautifully around you, and once you get to that good sleeve, like mostly um, people who do pattern drafting have a sloper or a block. I call it a block. Um, I love the word sloper better. I feel like that's an East Coast term and I love it better. But I, I say block. So Terry said she's taking a sloper class. That's the same thing. So um, usually you have your front and your back and your sleeve. You can't leave out the, the sleeve. You, you The sleeve is really like once you get this whole area right here, the shoulders and the sleeve fitting you, the rest is honestly a piece of cake. <laughs> the boobs will fall into place. Once you get all of this up here dialed in, because remember that crazy word bifurcated, you know, the sleeve going to the body. It's a cylinder going to a different cylinder and it needs to move independently of this cylinder, right? Your torso is one cylinder, your sleeve is another. And you're asking this to do a lot. So um, one of the things I like to do with some sleeves is I do something called adding a lift. 
I don't see this talked about a lot, and I don't know if maybe there's a, another word for it in the home sewing and indie pattern world that I don't know about. So I could be not using the right terminology, but in like a pattern drafting terms, um, like book book pattern drafting terms, it's called a lift. It's not the, the most elegant way to make your sleeve look because you're going to get a little extra fabric in your sleeve. But what I really love about it is when I lift my arms, my shirt doesn't come with me. So um, I really hate it when my shirt comes with me and then everything shows and then my shirt like gets hung up on something, you know? Maybe the bottom part of my shirt isn't, maybe it's the fabric, maybe it doesn't fit as well as I'd like it to, I don't know. But getting hung up on something and then I have to pull my shirt down, you know? So I add what's called a lift and how I do that is I, I flatten out the cap a tiny bit by adding it right here to the underarm. And so think about where this is at on my body. I'm not touching this right here, but right here, I'm adding it to the sleeve right here. So basically what I did was I added extra fabric there, you know? So you're gonna get a little extra fabric there. Like I say, it's not something you would do on a uh, very elegant blouse. You wouldn't do this on a, you know, fancy dress because you'd have some extra fabric there. I guess you could if you were doing a really like constrictive fabric, you know, like a tightly woven silk, but it'd be weird. I'm not in the fancy dressmaking world, so I'm not sure. I'd put seams in the sleeves, honestly. No, um, it's not a gusset because a gusset would be a separate piece of, of fabric. You could do that, but um, gu gussets are kind of hard to get to fit. I added on both front and back, Eliza. And so it, it, will, it will change the cap measurement a little bit and you might need to adjust your armhole a little bit. Like, and then how I would do that was I, I would go out right here a little bit. But it's usually not by much. And so I usually add in, it would look like this. So, so here's my uh, sleeve, right? Especially if it was one with a really tall cap like this that's narrow, that means there's not a lot of room for the gush. <laughs> If you don't have a lot of gush, you're okay. And I will tell you, if you look at the owner of any company that either drafts patterns for home sewing or makes clothes in ready to wear, um, and they're not a gigantic, like mega company, if you look at the owner, you're gonna see how well, what, what body type usually that will fit. There's nothing wrong with that. It just is how it is, you guys. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's just, it just happens. It's just like someone saw a need and they wanted to see that in the market, so they did it. So, you know, um, maybe uh, that company, you know, the that woman, um, has been flat chested all her life and she's tired of dealing with clothes that always have darts and all that fullness there. You know, she wants things to be a little more, you know, flat cut, you know? So then you see a lot of garments that are flat cut, you know what I mean? So, so anyway, um, if I were to add a lift to this, I would be adding it to the underarm. This is the underarm, by the way. This is the arm's eye or the cap. Cap or sleeve seam. The arm, usually you talk about the arm's eye and it's on the bodice, right? So I'm gonna add it here like this, symmetrically to both sides, symmetrically. I usually start with about three quarters of an inch. I go up. I'm so terrible at illustrating things, sorry. So I go up three quarters of an inch right here. Don't go much more than that. You'll get you'll get wrinkles right here, okay? And then um, what happens is when you do this, your most of your garment stays where you want it to. And so uh, for a long time, I, I really loved um, wearing, I used to use my basic block and make a very simple top that looked pretty much like this. I would have a dart here, 
It had a placket. And then I maybe I would add a um, collar sometimes. Maybe it would have a collar, you know. Uh, how do I draw a collar? Wait, like this, <laughs> sorry. Um, this was a very, 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 I made this blouse all the time. It fit me perfectly. I had a lift in the sleeve and this, my basic block got shared around town. Like a few women were like, you're kind of built like me. Can I borrow your block? <laughs> um, I just kind of blend this in, Malin. So like if, you're, if it were an actual, let's look at an actual size sleeve right here. I would probably like add the three quarters of an inch like right here, right? So here is our, um, we need like, I wish this was a whiteboard, huh? That would be fun. Um, let's do this. So we're gonna add three quarters of an inch here. Right that, like that, right? And then just blend this in and do it symmetrically. Honestly, I feel like mo almost all sleeve changes should happen folded in half. The only reason I didn't do this with you guys, and I'm sorry I didn't do it this that with you guys, is because um, I usually, I just don't like to know certain things about the sleeve I'm using because I don't want to talk about it sometimes. <laughs> So I, it really because I don't want you guys to think I think someone's sleeve is drafted improperly but because I'll end up talking about it and I don't want it to come off like I think it's improper. They found that works maybe maybe uh, let me back up and see what tell you why I'm saying that. All right. So when you fold the sleeve um, half on the half like this and it's a fitted sleeve. Now remember I'm not critiquing Grainline Studios sleeve pattern at all because this is a t-shirt pattern. It is not a basic sleeve block, okay? So that's my disclaimer, okay? Typically, right here on the front side of the sleeve, it's scooped out about a quarter inch compared to the back. Here's the back right here. This one's scooped out about maybe an eighth or none at all because remember, I have butchered the heck out of this now, right? So typically your front armhole is like this. It scoops out about a quarter inch from the back. It is actually not symmetrical. This is the only place your sleeve typically isn't symmetrical. This dot, the uh, notch is usually only one quarter of an inch from the center line right here, okay? That is classic sleeve drafting. And that is what you'd see on a block and then you would start with everything from that. Hi, Julia. <laughs> Uh, Jan, would that prevent doing a bicep adjustment? Not necessarily because you're not adding to the, doing the lift does not add circumference to your sleeve. So now, um, I know I've talked about this before, but let me, um, talk about sleeves and where they fit a little bit because it's really easy to forget where things are at, right? So, so when you're wearing the sleeve, this is around your arm. So now remember, bifurcated pattern. A bifurcated pattern means you have one cylinder going to another cylinder. So the sleeve cylinder, the sleeve is one, your arm is one cylinder and your torso is another cylinder, right? But when it attaches, you have the sleeve kind of playing both sides of the game, right? You got the lower half that goes around your arm right here, okay? And then you have this upper half, like, yo, I want to be part of the bodice. <laughs> so it's up here playing the upper torso game right here. And you're asking this and this to all be copacetic. Okay. Does that make sense? I feel like it's really, if you start understanding where things are at on your body when you're wearing them, like where on the pattern it is on you, you start kind of getting a little bit like, oh, no wonder. And you may start with, boy, I have no idea how to adjust that or fit that. But that's when you start like, okay, when I do this to it, what happens? When I do that to it, what happens? When I do something completely zany in the opposite, what happens? Because then you really start understanding what to not 
poke the bear and where to poke the bear. You know, Julia, honestly, this is my biggest pet peeve with knitwear designs is that, and I'm really sorry to say this, but most knitwear designers do not know how to drew all of this area here. And it's why so many sweaters drive me bonkers. And I've tried to talk with knitwear designers about it more in a like, hey, I'm curious, like how do, how do knitwear designers do this? You know, where are they getting this information? Because it's, it's bad. And I think it's just because it comes from a lot of flat knitting techniques. Um, and then maybe like, oh, let's make it all in one. Let's knit it all in one. Well, then when you knit it all in one, you're losing a lot of opportunity for darts, right? Because look at this. When you lay the sleeve on here, okay, this is one thing. I hope Grain Lang's not watching. This is one pet peeve of mine is that they give you a sleeve. This, the, the back sleeve, this is the front. I don't know why they do this. So basically this is really what we're looking at. Okay, so um, look at this. Like remember my sleeve eases in here, right? But you still have this dart right here because you, you got it like kind of pinch it out there. That's awesome, Julia. Yeah, yeah, I think it, I, and you know, I feel like there's a lot of knitwear folks that, um, not, not all of them, obviously, but there's a lot of them who look down on sewing. And um, I don't understand that, and I haven't really been able to talk with them back, because I really just, I'm not like, why are you down on sewing? I'm like, so why are you down on sewing? I wanna know, I wanna understand like what it is I love talking about that. Nobody really likes debating. They feel they feel very attacked by it. And I I would love to have those discussions. I love talking about that kind of stuff. And I would I and I've tried to talk to very well known designers when they've reached out and asked me a little question. I could tell they were trying to figure it out. And then I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> there's all these like standards in pattern drafting. Why not carry it over to knitwear? It is why a like, you know, someone's buying an off the rack sweater sometimes, you know, because they're using, what they do is they use um, pattern drafting from sewing to make the pieces for the knits, you know, and then they cut it out and sew it together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, well, Lisa, and I think also there's a lot of designers that um, are, you know, in the right place at the right time or know the right people and they have a really great audience and then the um, design maybe they t has like a look about it and it works really great on that body type but when it's graded to two or three sizes because they don't grade it out to enough sizes it kind of maintains that little look they get away with it yeah exactly julia and why yoke sweaters and yoke sweaters are a really great example of um why, uh, like, how do I put it? Because I've thought about that because it's really interesting because basically what you're saying is you're doing this, like, like remember I was just telling you, like, the sleeves playing this, like, I want to be part of the bodice gang. You know, like, that's what it is. You got this yoke right here, right? And then you have this going on. This is separate from the body, this part. It's complicated. It's complicated, but once you have your sloper or your block, it's all fine. All you need to learn from there is how to manipulate the pattern into the style you want. You have to separate out what your pattern is doing for fit and style. Concentric circles, exactly. They're just like knit, 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 knit. And now let's divide and make sleeves. <laughs> and now we're gonna decrease. Yeah, I understood. That I couldn't have never done knitwear design um, only because um, I don't know, it just didn't, I, I could have, but I, that wasn't, I just mean like, I would have had to sit there and learn all that, you know? But um, I understand what's happening when I'm doing it. And it's why my sweaters, most of them fit really good is because I'd be like, oh, I know where I need to decrease. So I feel like we're off track, I'm sorry, you guys. I may not get to cutting out the scout, scout tee today, but you've seen me cut, you know what that looks like. So let's just talk pattern drafting, because I love pattern drafting. Um, so now my sleeve is, is where I want fit wise. Now I make the adjustments for style. Trying to do both at once sometimes doesn't work with the changes you're trying to make. So, all right, so the, yeah, the person who was asking me about a lift, who was that? 
I was trying to make them understand that where I'm adding it to is the underarm length. It's kind of like I'm kind of going against the game that the sleeve's trying to play when I do this, you know? So. And you know, like when I say, oh, this shirt I made has a lift, people are like, oh, a lift, wait, well, tell me about that. But if you start looking at the way it looks at me really closely, like if you're a pattern drafter and you're like, well, how does that actually look? You're probably not gonna be happy with all of the details because you're gonna see a little bit of extra fabric right here. But when you're doing this, you're like, no extra fabric, it feels great. <laughs> so it just depends on what, you know, the push pull, right? What you're willing to deal with, so or have, you know, what you're giving up. All right, so now I have my sleeve and I just ruined my piece of paper. <laughs> I keep ruining my pieces of paper, but I actually probably don't need all of it. All right, so is this big enough? This is not really big enough. I'll use that for my yoke. Here's one. I cut off a bunch of lengths of paper before I start, just in case, it's a good thing I do. Um, let's see here, so I am going to start with it on the fold here. Now I'm just making this little miniature flutter sleeve, and I, I have to admit, you guys, I, I haven't made one of these in a really long time. I don't actually know how long I want it. Um, I just, I do think I want an underarm, though. So by, by that, I mean, um... Like, you could do this sleeve. Uh, that's the, the worst um, armhole ever. That's this shoulder. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn it over. I can't stand to look at that. So, why can I not draw this? You know why? Because I always start on the left of the garment. Okay, so here we go. So, here's one way. So, you could do it where it's like this flutter. And then it tapers to nothing in the along the arm's eye here. And then you have to finish this part of the armhole to the back, you know, and then you know your sleeve continues. Do, 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 right? Uh yeah, you know, I it, uh, uh, right. Okay. Uh the other style you can do is the one I kind of want is um I actually do want a little bit of an underarm. Oh god. But you're really not going to see much of it. It'll be underneath. Uh, I'm really sorry for my poor drawing skills. <laughs> I think I'm doing this totally wrong. <laughs> oh my god. I want it longer than that. That's why. I think. <laughs> It'll be clear when I start drafting it. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so here's my sleeve. Um, let's trace off my sleeve. I'm going to trace it off in... Uh, I'll trace it off in blue. I don't need the hemline, really. I'm going to trace it off in blue. I'm going to transfer my notches, potentially. And then I'm going to um, do my changes in red, I think. So... You need to add a little bit to the underarm. I mean, uh, the, yeah, because we want flutter on the bottom part. I'm not changing the cap. I'm only changing the hem to be loose, right? So let's think about this. I think I want the hem to be about an inch and a half long. The hem, I'm sorry, the underarm, an inch and a half long. And the overall sleeve, let's see. I think I'm going to go for like, hmm, I'm going to go like short, kind of like four inches, all right, so about right here. And then I just need to add a little bit to the hem. So let's see, uh, I'm going to kind of swing this way out. Now I'm swinging it, I'm pivoting it on the seam line. This is a definite quick and dirty way to do this. I'm leaving my cap the same, but I'm adding a lot down here. So I'm just gonna retrace the cap. And I see I have a big point right here. 
I'm gonna straighten this out so I have a right angle at the center and then I'm going to add my length so I just did it four and a half let's see how am I gonna hem this I think I might actually try using a marrow stitch on my my sheen so I'm gonna do it the actual length four and a half and then I want this to finish let's see let's say we want it to finish one inch let's try that I have enough fabric that if I don't like the sleeve I can actually cut another all right so there is my little sleeve I feel like, is that going to be fluttery enough? Let's see, ten and a quarter. Let's see. I don't have one here. I'm kind of winging it. This is ten, so it would be twenty, but it would be fluttery. I think I'm going to want more. Well, let's do a little bit more. Yeah, you do um, nothing. And then do you do a faced underarm? I know. Do you think that would look better, doing it to nothing? Hmm. I, I kind of want to wear this in the fall. So I'm kind of going for, like, that's why I want the full... But I think you're right. Maybe I should do the to nothing. Does it end uh, like, oh, five inches away from the US team? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's what I was saying. Like, there's the one that goes through the armhole, and then there's the kind that um, stops. Well, none of these. Yeah, so there's the kind that also stops like, like that. Right? Muslin. Muslin? No. <laughs> Saying muslin is like um, knit a swatch, right? <laughs> All right, so then let, let's try it. Let's do it. I, I can't remember. I, I kind of want to cheat and look at one of my pattern drafting books. So I'm going to go for the four inch length. And then what does your sleeve look like? Does it look like this? It look, does it look like that? Swatch, yeah. Yeah. Like this, Julia? Or does it swing out more above your cap? I, I've seen these sleeves and they usually look like a bell. That's the fold. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Lisa, you don't do swatches, but you do muslins. I'd rather someone muslin did a swatch. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. It wasn't live streaming. Really, yeah, I, it's doing something weird. There's a bunch of people on Twitch that could, there's at least one or two people on Twitch who couldn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> I always swatched. I'm a good little knitter. <laughs> Hmm. I think I'm going to, um, I am going to kind of kick it up right here. Yeah, but that's why I, you use muslin. Literally use muslin. <laughs> I'm walking my sleeve along the sleeve line here. So let's do this. All right. This is a heinous looking sleeve right now. And I'm ruining my ruler. All right, so let's see. We know we have, we know we have the seam allowance built on here. <laughs> Malin, what's the point? 
Um, I, you know what? I ended up going with my husband and brother, and we were kind of knackered by the end of it. So we just got lunch. Where did we get lunch at? It was actually really good. I ended up having tater tots for lunch with all this stuff on top. It was really good. Yeah, just barely there under the arm. That's what I'm thinking, Eileen. Well, we'll see, right? <laughs> all right, I got my sleeve here. I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna keep that one, and I'm gonna get rid of all this. And let's make the changes to our bodice now. Um, put that away. We could put our um, notes on here. I didn't. Flutter sleeve, scout, size 12, two. And then um, we have our notch right here. And then this would be the front. And this is the back. It's not going to be as critical except that I put the notch right there. So. Yeah, right, Julia? Me too. That's so funny how people avoid swatches. They don't take that long, you guys. And it's kind of like a, I consider it part of the creative process. You know? Because you get to see then like how it's going to work and... If I'm gonna about to spend 40 to 60 hours on a sweater, you can darn well bet I'll spend an hour on a swatch. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Now we're going to make a couple of changes to our pattern. I know, I just wanna to get to the real knitting too, but consider it the real knitting, it's more fun. I'm going to put a little yoke at the top because of the sheerness of my fabric. Franken pattern. And let's see, how far do I want this? You guys are saying the neck's wide, huh? It looks a little deep. Let's see what this measurement is. This measurement's always a little ambiguous. That's about right here, maybe. Does that seem about right? Yeah. So, um, I want it to be like just above my uh, bust, maybe like an inch above my apex. There's my apex. So let's see, that would be, I don't want it like on here. I want it a little bit above. So let's see where is eight inches at. It's about right there which is actually with my armhole line, and I'd rather it not the line go there. I'd rather it be a, clearly above the armhole, you know? The, this, this actually, like I don't like high necks, but when you have a yoke, sometimes um, you, it might look less high when you have a yoke, you know? Like if you have a yoke seam right here, that's like makes this two inches. Let's see, we're two, like two inches right there. That would be fine. Look at how far away we are from the, the um, armhole. That's great. But say this was a little more scooped right down here or something, right? And we don't like high necks. But if you put it, if you are putting a yoke seam here, it'll actually not look that high if you have to raise your neckline there. So, yeah, them, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, right, Eileen, yeah. I know, that's what I was thinking originally, that I wanted it to go there so I didn't, I don't have to deal with that, but at the same time, I don't mind putting binding right here, because um, that's what we're gonna do on the neckline. In fact, what I probably will do is bind the whole armhole now, because of, um, I don't want that seam to poke out and show, you know? That'll be cute. Yeah, I'm looking forward to sewing this. All right, so let's let's do this about right here. Let's do like right here, actually, two and a quarter. Okay. 
All right, so this is my, my cut line. And the reason I'm saying that is you have to remind yourself that you need to add seam allowance to both edges. No one's ever forgotten to do that, right? <laughs> All right, and now you're going to um, add your seam allowance to both edges, and I like to do it like this sometimes. I just do them both at the same time. So I'll tape this on here. I used scrap paper to print my pattern. And then I'm gonna add an inch, because that'll be a half inch to each edge. Basically, you just need to add your seam allowance to each edge, however you like doing it. This way it uses the least amount of paper and, um, oh, oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. You cut off a piece, you may lose a piece. The FBA we didn't keep. Line it up on the center front and then on that new line. <laughs> I can always print another one, Nancy. You just gotta like tell yourself um, something that'll make you feel more relaxed about it. Like, okay, what if I ruin this? What's my backup plan, right? I really love backup plans because that way um, that's always in the back of your head and you'll kind of go forth a little bit more confidently. Boy, this pattern is looking a hot mess back here. Let's just uh, tape some paper, tape some stuff. It's just a piece of paper, it's just a template, right? All right, so let's add your half inch seam line. Now remember, like your seam allowance here, you can kind of do this, like do that, but I, I don't, I'm gonna square it off right here. I'm gonna square it here. That is the seam line. This line that we cut is the seam line where you're going to sew, right? So this is gonna line up to that. It doesn't look like it's going to though, but it should. Let's see. Another reason to do it directly across like that. You can always trace another piece. And you know what? You can always trace it first and then do all your adjustments. I think my biggest thing when I was a new pattern drafter, like when I was in school, is I would lose track of my changes. And if you look back on some of my things in my book, I used to write in a lot of different color inks. And I think, um, you know, that's also something you would do when you're 18 years old as well. But I would tell myself, like I would start off with the blue pen, and then I would tell myself, like when I make an adjustment, I'm like, okay, now pink rules. And then I would do like, then I would do green. I'm like, okay, now green rules. And I would remind myself which one is the last line. And that really helped me. But there were times where, you know, when things go really bad, and I know a lot of us have been there, things go really badly. And you've done so many things. You're like, I don't even know what's right anymore or what the original is. You know, it's almost faster to start from the beginning. And then you start from the beginning. You're like, this isn't as far off as I thought, right? <laughs> that's awesome Melin. yeah I mean right now you know and at least you know you changed that pattern you can see it okay so now we have our yoke um, and now I'm going to do my hem adjustment so this is just my front yoke and I do want one on the back as well let's cut this right here I want to remember that this is actually the cut line, so that's why I'm trimming it now. So I don't accidentally include that little bit. That's my center front on the fold. And then let's mark this center front yoke. A yoke is always the part that's right here and above, right? You, we all know that on the back of a button up shirt, um, like a man's Oxford or a woman's Oxford, that that's the yoke at the back. It's the same in the front as well. All right, and so to do the, the um, back, we're gonna use the front and kind of find the exact same line. 
What I would do is kind of look at your side seams here. Now, the yoke didn't go into the side seam. The only reason I'm doing this is to kind of maintain the same line visually. So for when you stand on the side, you would see the yoke seam kind of parallel to the floor on both sides. So totally, Lisa, it totally would. I mean, the full calf adjustment, the calf adjustment is a lot like the FBA because you cut, cut, right? And then you pivot it out. It kind of looks fun to do. Um, so this isn't always true. Like you don't have to have this line going parallel. Now you don't line it up from the top. And the reason is that this spot might not be in the same place as it is when it's at the base. Cause this shoulder line right here isn't perfectly in the middle of us. It comes forward. Usually the back shoulder usually comes a little forward. So it may coincidentally match up and maybe on your body it might work maybe that is the spot right just depends <laughs> you're making ginger jeans you go girl nice okay so um i'm actually now i'm kind of thinking about this going well how much sheer do i want in the back I actually don't want a whole lot. Maybe I want this a little higher in the back than in the front. Maybe I want to match the depth at the center front and the same in the back. You know, I kind of like the idea of that. I think it would look a little more delicate. I don't really want the whole upper part of my back to be this sheer, right? <laughs> oh, I know. I have one that's twisted too, Nancy. I think we've talked about that. <laughs> so I think actually what I'm going to do is go for where I want the line to look in the back. My little flutter sleeve, by the way, let's see where it's going to go. Maybe I should have been thinking about where I want the flutter sleeve to end in relation to the, um, the yoke seam, you know, the sleeve may be a work in progress though. So let's get our yoke right. Yeah, so let's see here. I think what I'd like to do is maybe do it about three inches deep in the back. And um, and this, this kind of gives me also the opportunity that um, when I do the back, I can actually add a pleat if I wanted. Really what I need is it to spread out down there for my hip, but I'm not making mine very long. So that's another change. We're definitely gonna, not gonna get to cutting this out. I'll poop out before that. All right, so um, let's add our seam allowance. This is another way you can do it. Add one inch. Nobody, I don't wanna know if the seam allowance is actually five eighths, please don't tell me. <laughs> I don't know why I glommed on to half inch. Right, there's that. Another reason why all pattern pieces should always have their seam allowances on them because not everybody does it as is. Yeah, so what'd you decide to do with your de deterra top? Oh, my dress form's too tiny. But you know what I think I'll do, Julia, is, um, yeah, exactly, Nancy, it will be above my bra band, yeah. I think what I'm gonna do, um, Julia, is cut out the little sleeve in muslin and just um, tape it to the pattern pieces. So, she falls to half inch, that's what I thought too. I don't wanna know if it's five inches. <laughs> All right, so here's my half inch seam. Let's see. All right, so now we have our the messy pattern drafter. I'm a hot mess when I'm like in the pattern drafting room, but I always presented a really 
clean product. Good spec sheets. I was known for my spec sheets, you guys. 20 page long spec sheet packages. I did all the work nobody liked. That's how you stay employed, by the way. <laughs> nobody likes doing something, then you start going, hmm, how bad is it? And then you're like, oh, it's not that bad. I'll just pretend like it is. Center back yoke scout. Scout, I love that word. My parents had a dog named Scout. Um, all right, so my back on my front. So now look at that line is quite a bit different spot. <laughs> Not funny. Quite a bit different, right? <laughs> it's always fascinating when you start thinking about how things are lining up and where they are in your body. I love thinking about this stuff. Okay, so uh, my overall length, I want to be about 11 and a half inches, which is like, it's like right here. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like right here. There's no, that's not it. It's a side seam, never, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. It's like right here. I was like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> um, so um, let's see, let's do a uh, quick, yeah, so I think I was 11 and a half side seam. I'm thinking about right here because I kind of want it to like stop right before it gets full at my hip. It kind of hangs free a little bit. The little swoopy um, hem is going to help that too. It's going to help it release a little bit. So, yeah, so let's make it like 11 and a half finished right there. But now we're going to, let's decide how... So do I want that to go up? Where's my 11 and a half? Is that my 11 and a half? Is this my 11 and a half? So if that was right here, if it's right here, I think, yeah, I think I'll go up a little on the side and down a little in the front, you know? I'm gonna kinda, kinda split the difference. So let's see here. 11 and a half is about right here, okay? So let's go up an inch on the side. Because remember, it's not a big uh, swoop like this where there'll be a gap. It'll actually come to a point, you know? Because I also don't like it when your shirt shows your skin right here, you know, above your waistband. So. A little more for you guys want me to do different um <laughs> front and back get your mind out of the gutter whoops is it funny that i knew exactly what you were talking about <laughs> okay i have a jean skirt on so let's see um okay this is probably more like where it would be so that would be okay. Okay, so that's good. All right, so we're gonna do there to um, maybe like here. Like this, it's not that drastic. But then you're saying do, do more drastic than the, um, the back. <laughs> you gals. <laughs> That's funny. I saw it somewhere else today. I was like, hmm. All right, where's my hip curve? Where's my hip curve? All right, so let's look at our seam line. Here's half inch. So here's my seam line. Here's where I want it to end. Here, let's do it right here. Let's do our curve, because um, we're not looking for a right angle right here, like typically a 
Oxford would be like this, right? We're not doing that. We're doing it like, what's like this? The Tamarack's like this, okay? Like that. That's not very drastic, you guys. Do I, do I want it drastic? <laughs> Maybe I could go higher on the sides. Maybe if it went like this. You would see it more. Yeah, what do you think of that? So more like curve happened faster. Oh, like this? So shallower? Top one. Ah, awesome, Mullen. I'm gonna go higher on the side. You may have to make the whole thing a little bit bigger. Yeah, <laughs> Mullen, that's awesome. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm sewing it Wednesday, Eliza. 11 a.m. Pacific. No, the opposite down here. Or do you like my blue line that I just did? Oh, you mean down here, don't you? Center front. Let's overlap this about an inch. None of those. <laughs> Drops to the bottom line faster. Tell me uh, specifics, like drop the center front line down more or raise it more, and same with the back, or is it side seam, up or down? Talk to me in those types of terms. I, I might understand that better. No. <laughs> you gotta love the YouTube delay. No, no, no. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. So, I don't want to do the right angles. I don't want that. I don't think it's going to look um, side down. It looks like I wouldn't want my fat to show. I don't think it will, though, Eliza. I think it's going to end, like, right here. And like I said, it's not a gap. A more dramatic curve over a smaller distance. Same depth though. How do I get a more dramatic curve with the same distance? Oh, I, I think I know what you mean. You mean like this, Julia? Green line? And then like this. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, okay. Okay, you guys. I feel you, I feel you. I love that Julia on Twitch and YouTube wrote in all caps, yes, on both. Cause you know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so something like that. Yeah, I feel, I feel you. I like that. Like from the front, when I'm wearing it, you're not gonna see it. You know, that's my thing is, 
it's going to be more uh, uh, on the side but i feel like it does kind of address some of our concerns with um any type of you know skin showing right here or you know but then i i like that it's also a slit without being a slit slit like a squared off slit it's more of a rounded slit okay i get it all right so let's then raise up the front a tiny bit from here because you want you also want a longer back right this is my shirt by the way <laughs> i'm gonna raise this an inch i'm gonna go all the way over i'm gonna cut now okay I try permission <laughs> um and then you see where I ended up because I kind of lost track so this is ten and a half something like that yeah I yeah yeah okay okay that's why you're suggesting it okay I get it okay I like it I like it let's see I need to cut it because I want to look at it from the back without all those lines. Yeah? I feel like it's a choose your own adventure. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not that deep right there. It's just I don't, I don't have it cut. The seam allowance isn't cut right here. That's why it looks deeper than it should be. Right there, but it'll be like that. You like it? Okay. <laughs> Julie's all, anyone else want to chime in here? I don't want it to look like the Cali. I don't want it to be too short. Okay, so um, let's look at our side seam here. We'll line it up on the sew line, okay? Here's the, I'm gonna do the red line and I'm gonna do a green line. Oh, oh, don't move please. I'm not a big fan of high low, but I don't mind giving it a shot. You like it? Okay. Eliza likes it. Um dramatic? Like one and a half? I I'm not gonna go too low. I actually like for me the back is a problem because of the the sitting on my butt. I don't want it to sit on my butt. I'd rather make it about the same than too much longer. You know, it's comfortable, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start with that. And then, is that, is that not a straight, what is this going on here? Oh yeah, that is a straight line. Okay, I'm just making sure. Okay. Um, I think the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing out my back. I'm gonna add some fabric back there. Kind of tempted to add it in the form of a like a, a inverted pleat. You're not a fan of high low? Yeah, me either. I actually don't think this is gonna show up very much. You know? I'm already trying to decide how I'm gonna sew it. So, um, like for me, um, I have a, a lot of issues with fabric pooling in my back and people are like, oh, you have a sway, you need a sway back adjustment. I actually don't think that's what it is. I think that I have, you know, my 
butt starts right here and my my waist is a little narrow and um I don't think it's a sway back at all. I would love to blame it on that, but I think it's just me and where I'm getting softer. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Julie, I could see that. So um, I, what I did on that one Melo was I just took it and from the center back, I just swung it out quite a bit, like that much, like two inches right here. So it was four inches bigger. Thanks for following Katie. Welcome here. <laughs> I'm not live on Twitch and YouTube, so most of the comments are on YouTube right now. <laughs> you like the previous shallower curve? Uh-oh. Lisa. So that it was more dramatic right here. Do I need to sew a muslin of this? I don't mind it being kind of gentle, like and kind of subtle. Remember, I wanted something kind of like boxy and sporty with some jeans. Um, I don't need the curve to be visible from the front. Really, I re I'm liking this curve to be utilized as more like a slit so that it releases the, um, the girth around the hip and doesn't get hung up on my hips. I also want to make sure it's not too long. I kind of wanted to just sit right here, you know? It'd be kind of sporty for lack of a better word. So yeah, so that's one way I dealt with that and it worked a charm, quick and dirty, and I made sure my hem was still straight. That was the only thing I did on that mellow low. Um, and right now I'm thinking, like if you want to add a pleat, you can do this two ways. I'm going to tell you guys something right now that I think for me is the big problem with the Cali shirt dress. And I think that huge pleat at the top, they did this. They pivoted like this. And they didn't add much of it to the bottom. If they did add much of it to the bottom, they maybe went like this and then went like this. So if this was their, say this was the center back line. Because I really love that dress. I love the way it looked on me. And then I hated the way it back, the back looked like a, a pillowcase on me. So here's a few ways to do this, right? So if you want to add um, some pleat at the top, like, you know, like an Oxford has. I always reference Oxfords, don't I? Okay, so say, um, don't disregard this line right here. I don't know why I do that one. I should have just flipped the paper over. So line it all up right here this is my center back line not all this extra paper right if you want a um pleat that is just like a little pleat up there to give you a little bit um of girth right here like a lot of people are like why is there that pleat there i don't like it the thing is you need it more than you think for movement because the shirt is usually cut kind of slim so if you add a inverted or a box pleat right here you just need to go parallel like that however much you want so if i did an inch like this that's a two inch you just added two inches of girth back there so usually they're a little shallower than that right yeah oh that's awesome elizabeth this sure fits you good that's good yeah so what i think the cow the cowlies is like um, a four inch at least deep pleat and I think they did this so none of it got added here and all of it's here and look at that there is my hump right double that right because that's what it would look like there's my hump back there you go that's what I think that is there's nothing wrong with that you guys I'm just saying that's why it does that on me when I already have an issue where I need more here and less up here because I'm kind of kind of narrow there in my rib cage area so Adding it right there wasn't where I needed it. I needed it to be like this, you know? Or like if I you add a pleat for decoration and then incorporate it with the hem, so. Especially if you're a C cup or more, and I'm a double D, so. Yeah, not sandwich problem, obviously. Yeah, I don't have a long torso. I have a short torso. Um, so, um, Think about things like this, you guys. Like, don't just glom on to, like I did. I was like, oh, sway back measurement. That sounds like me. And then I started thinking about it, and I started, like, looking into what that is. 
And I, I would love to say that that's it. I go to a chiropractor every two weeks. I almost ask my chiropractor to drive us way back. I think he would have been like, no. You know, my posture is actually pretty good. But I do have this one weird quirk that you guys would never know, and is that I am a toe walker. Like, I'm a bad toe walker, and I'll tell you why. And it's because my Achilles tendons are short. They're bent, right? So because my Achilles tendons, my ankle can't, like, my my uh, heel can't touch the ground, I sit on my toes a lot. So it does make me sit forward a lot. And so my husband was like, I'll bet that muscle there is overdeveloped up here. So that makes a lot of sense. I was a runner for a really long time. And not a serious runner, just a consistent, like, stay in shape. I'm a Californian. I got to look good way. I'm not proud to admit, but that's it, right? I grew up in Southern California. And so, you know, <laughs> now I moved here. It's too hot for me to run. So... I think that he's right because I was telling him about something and he was like, I think that's because you're a toe walker. And I, so I wear dance goes every day because that really helps. And if I don't, I have to wear serious orthotics. I ended up getting like lifts in my shoes so that the ground meets my heels, right? So that's what helps. And I go to chiropractor because I have to deal with all my neck issues because of it. So yeah, they are kind of athletic, but you know, like my chiropractor, Nancy, is like, you have the tightest calf muscles, and it's because I'm walking on my toes. Like walking, I'm one of the only people that would be allowed kind of to wear high heels because it's naturally how my body is. But it also sometimes look like, looks like I'm tipped forward, you know, not in a good way. And I think that that's also partly what's going on for me back here. Hello, Mara, how's it going? Hello. So um, these are just my thoughts on where you're adding a um, pleat back here. For me, um, just, just swinging it out right here is enough. I don't need the girth right here. I need it here. But if you would like a little decorative pleat, just add it parallel. Unless you're like, I'm really narrow through my hips back here. I don't want any extra fabric. Or maybe you want, like when you tuck it in, you want there to be as little fabric as possible and you'd like some more movement up here, then you're gonna pivot like this, okay? So. I'm supposed to be cutting out the Scout T today, Mata, but um, we've gotten really sidetracked with pattern drafting and all the little changes that I wanted to make and sleeves and I love it. I hope you guys do too. So, yeah. Yeah, Nancy, I've always locked like that, even when I was a kid. They tried to break me of it, and it just didn't work. The solution is to cut my Achilles tendons when I'm like, <laughs> you're not cutting my Achilles tendons. No way. <laughs> That's frightful. I've read way too many Greek myths. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my flutter sleeve. What am I missing, you guys? I got my sl flutter sleeve. I'm making a sheer yoke. And I'm making a lined bodice. There's no better person to complicate a simple garment than me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, this is the, the uh, piece of binding you cut. Oh, you're into the hardware store. Terry, I need batteries. <laughs> really badly. I got the coolest thing for my bed recently, you guys. You guys don't want to know all this, I'm sure. But um, you're finding that out. <laughs> but um, so I think probably a lot of you have probably heard of Sleep Number Bed. Well, we were there looking at beds recently, and I was telling the woman how hot it is upstairs in our bedroom because if it's 100 degrees outside, it, it'll just be 90 upstairs, right? Because the heat rises and it's really hot and I can't sleep. And um, that's been my biggest disappointment moving here is I can't sleep because of the heat in the summer. And so she was like, you know, we have this really cool thing that cools your bed. And basically you lay it on the bed and it's a, um, a fan and it's generating air. And you, you get to sleep under the covers because you we need to keep the covers over you so that the air is cooling you off. And at first I was like, I don't want to sleep under the covers if I'm hot though, right? Really, Deb? See, good to know that, Deb. Um, and um, they had them um, on the, the a certain size on clearance 
And they were like, that'll work still on a queen or a king size bed um, if you want. It was like, cow, cow kings are longer, right? And so it was just a little longer so it hangs off the edge. You can't see it's underneath my sheet. I got that thing. It is amazing. And I love it. I love this thing. It just it just sounds like a gentle, like, gentle motor, gentle whirring. It sounds, it's quieter than my fan in my room. So I got it. I call it the elephant because it has like, it looks like an elephant trunk from the side of my bed going down underneath, you know? Uh, and like, because it was on clearance, this is why I got it, you guys. And I was like, this is going to improve the quality of life for everybody in my family. If I get this. Yeah, you tried that, Lisa? It's pretty cool, huh? And uh, no scalloped him, Eileen. We're going to do a, a curve here. If you can tell by my mess. But anyway, this is the crazy things. The crazy thing is the remote for some reason stayed on the other night because you have you turn it on with a little remote and then the batteries died and I can't turn it on without the, the batteries. And I, every night I'm like, oh, I can't put on my elephant. So <laughs> yeah, the Sharpies are out of control here. We had some miscommunications with shaping the hem. <laughs> there was shouting in chat. I'm not going to name names, <laughs> Julia, <laughs> but this is where I'm going with this. So here's my little sketch right here. I'm doing a sheer yoke with a flutter sleeve. I'm aligning the bodice because the fabric is so sheer. I'm doing a shaped hem, but like this, not like this. So the, it comes to a peak at the side seam and comes down. Yeah, so Lisa, they've been on clearance right now. They're like 30% off. It was quite an investment, I will admit, but um, I do not regret it. I love it. And you know, um, that like I feel like it keeps my room cooler too because there's air flowing under the bed. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, you guys. The Sharpies are out of control. You're right. Let's move all this stuff. I look, See, I keep migrating over here. sleeve that I uh, changed for later. All right, I'm gonna cut this out now. I am lining it. Um, your husband is a furnace bed, bed jet. No, I don't know what it's called. It's from um, Sleep Number Bed and it's just the cooling system that they have that you lay on top of the mattress, Julia. You can DM me and I can tell you more about it if you want. I, lo I love it, it works amazing. Every time, I will tell you, you there's three settings on it. You can have it um, you know, low, medium, or high. And then you also set a timer. You can just have it go continuously, but I set it to turn off like after three or four hours while I'm sleeping, when, it, when the morning finally starts cooling off the bedroom. And, um, uh, every time I get in bed, like it's good to just turn it on like 20 minutes before and the, the amount of electricity it uses, it's totally energy star, all that. So it's great. Oh, really Jan? Yeah. So this thing doesn't help, help, doesn't do that. Yeah. We have a sleep number bed. It worked. We ended up getting one of those. We kind of had to. And, um, the, um, every time I get into bed though, I'm like, it doesn't feel like it's cool. And then when I lay there and I just think about it, I can feel the air like just really gently like cooling me off. It's awesome. Like I get into bed and my my neck and my back are so hot from sitting in my chair. It's probably because I'm all heated trying to, you know, do good in video games, right? <laughs> okay. I am lining this with a probably a not too in, uh, too great a fabric for what I'm using. What I have here, and I told you I have a lot, so I'm going to just try it. This is Spoonflower uh, Poplin Unprinted. Um, it was just extra. It comes extra on some of my rolls when I order like 90 yards. <laughs> they send a little, a few yards sometimes are unprinted. It's probably because that's how big their roll was or something. 
So, so I didn't really decide if I was going to add some to the back hem. Let's. I'm going to measure this. I actually was thinking about this, right? So, so 22 inches across. This is my other thing about the Cali. The back is so narrow. You see, I think I might swing this out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that is exactly, Nancy, that is it. I have a fan, standing fan, the air conditioning on, and now I have my elephant. 55 degrees in rain, he wears socks to bed. Yeah, I lived in that climate, Mata. I love it, I slept so good. Yeah, it was like 40 at night. <laughs> Loved it. Um, let's see here. After all that, I'm going to add a little just to my back, okay? I think, um, I think a little like pleat would be cute. So let's just add a little bit of a... I'll just add a one inch pleat and then we'll just do that. We'll just do it all the way down. You know, like that. Yeah, and so sometimes I have two cats and two dogs on my bed as well. Um, and they don't wanna touch us either, they're too hot. But I kinda figured my cat's gonna be like, he's gonna figure it out that my bed's colder. I don't think they noticed it though. He usually sleeps under the bed, and I thought, oh, he's not really going to like this little fan down there, but he doesn't care at all. Maybe it blows on him. I don't know. I don't care. I just want to sleep. And I'm finally sleeping all the way through. Awesome. First time in seven years I have slept all the way through the night now. <laughs> so I'm happy. In the summertime, meaning. All right, so here I just added two inches across the bottom of my hip, but I'm going to take it out up here with a dart, I mean a cleat. Fall in Europe soon, yeah, see you. It'll still be hot here for a little while. So yeah, so this is just a spoon flower poplin. It's it's got a nice weave. It is um, kind of garment-ish, but it would be a little boardy for that. So I'm gonna line up my line here, my new center back line on the fold. I'm gonna do the lining first. And I think like I'm making this, so this, this see-through fabric that I'm using the drape is okay. It's not the greatest, okay? It's going to get hung up on things on me. And I feel like adding the lining may, making it a little stiffer, just like going with the fact that it's a little bit like stiff will help. You know, like I just think like, wait, why not just go for it? And then we'll line it. I may need a new blade. Um, and see how it works. Yeah, I think I need a new blade. Yep, I do. Okay. I've been cutting a lot of stuff lately. All right, we're gonna do our notch for our new pleat and then a center notch to match it up to. And then we need to cut this out of regular fabric. Oh, and by the way, all the giveaway things have been mailed. Like a, a couple days ago, I finally got the previous weeks and then Nancy's went out today. Like I dropped it off yesterday, so I knew it was going out today. So four of you who got giveaways either definitely there yet now or um, on their way 
I pre-washed this fabric originally to um, be used as interfacing. Your dog likes sleeping under the covers? Oh my gosh. I think the pug would do that, but he's not going to sleep with me under the covers. <laughs> he does with Cricket. Franken pattern. You guys have plans this weekend? What are you guys up to? It's 70, 20, oh my gosh. That's nice. It's only gonna be 83 here today. Oh, cool, Nancy. You got a notification? Good. I, I think I remembered to do the um, email for like two of you. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can, I can give them an email. That'd be great. She's part pug, yeah, see. It's just too hot for him right now. I don't think he's going to. Uh, oh, this is all I'm lining. I don't need any more of this. So let's see, this is the right side. I'm gonna refold this a little bit. You're making a DIY large ironing board? Ooh, Terry, that sounds like a great project. You're wearing socks, oh my God. I get the cutest socks as gifts and I haven't worn socks in so long now. At least my friends who knit know not to give me hand knit socks because I think they know I'm kind of hot now. Let's see, did I, could I actually get this? No, there's no way. Okay, good. Then I won't be as conservative as I could be. Ooh, nice, Nancy. <laughs> All right, so I'm like, I'm kind of looking at the repeats here. Part of me wants to center this on the repeat. See how clingy it is? That's what I'm talking about. It's super clingy. Doing it, doing the uh, poplin could be a bad choice or just a good way to just go with it and make it kind of heavy and hang straight, you know? Yeah, and I think, um, wasn't it Elaine who was experiencing Dorian? Yeah, I wonder how Elaine did yesterday. I'm kind of looking at the lines. So the lines on the fabric are part of the grain, like they are the weave, whereas the print is the print. I'm gonna line up my center back here. Let's see if my blade's good enough for this lightweight stuff. <laughs> no boob flowers. Hashtag no boob flowers. Absolutely so joy. I can feel those little stripes as ridges. I, I do want to be pretty mindful of cutting this because I am lining it to the exact same piece. And if it's a little bit off, you, you might get a little bit of... Um, of it hanging funny, you know? Because it's if it were hanging freely, the lining hanging freely, it wouldn't be such a stress, but because I'm anchoring it at the seams, um, I do want to make sure that it's cut the same, you know? Yeah, you know what, Mata, I did the same thing. 
I ended up doing the high rise and it was a little too high and then I kind of did kind of a middle of the road on those gingers. All right, so this is the back. And I'm gonna be able to tell that because I have the um, notches here at the top. I have shelves everywhere. Let's get rid of this piece here. Here. I think my, my husband's going to a soccer game, so he's going to be gone tonight. He's been on the hunt for an RV. He really wants to do some like camping type stuff. Good night, Eileen. Have a good day. Or, you know, not good night maybe, but... Have a good afternoon. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday, maybe. I'll be sewing it up. Today was fun. I really like it when you guys are into the pattern drafting stuff. You know, there are more different, there are a few different rise patterns on the gingers. I didn't know that when I bought mine. And then when I altered them, I was like, wow, I really have to alter these. And I realized, well, you dummy, you bought the, you bought the, that style. You could have bought the other style, the one that you actually ended up altering your pattern for. And I, it took me a while to realize that. I'm a little short-waisted, so I just thought it was me. <laughs> yeah, there's a few different ones that they sell. Um, because this was uh, face down, I'm just going to double check it. Make sure I cut it on the fold. Yep, okay. Um, I'm going to do a tiny notch right here for the center because I'll want it later anyway. I really like this fabric, but I have to say like the, this color green, it's a little minty for me. It's kind of the, the a weird mint to me. Um, and I kind of started shying away from it. But I was thinking like, if you got, if I wore it with a pair of like pants that were this deep, like plum color, I would really like that. It would bring it out more of the fall colors in it. All right, so we have our flutter sleeves, so we can just center a big old flower on there. We have a lot of fabric. Um, maybe I'll do my yokes next. So let's see how, so we're not going for boob flowers, right? But if we do this right here, we can put a flower right here and here. Or we can miss all the flowers and do it here. You know, that would give me boob flowers though. Right? Yeah. See, I need a new. The lighter weight fabrics are harder to cut. You know? Let's change the blade. This is how I do it. I, I do an old one and a new one. I get it all ready. interesting Julia eight second delay huh 
Usually it's always delayed like that though, isn't it? YouTube's, I'm, I really wish I could find a video expert to help me. Anyone knows anyone who knows about live streaming? Because there's people that do video, but then when they start talking about live streaming, they don't really know how to do it. And um, I need some help with it. I need some help figuring things out. So I'm trying to line up the print, but really I want to stay on green. So the these stripes are going to rule. The print might not be printed perfectly symmetrical, you know. That's interesting. You bought the midwives? <laughs> I like that autocorrect. You meant mid-rise? <laughs> yeah, I know. I did that. I did that too with my gingers. Um, in fact, let's see which one I bought because I'm, I've always... Oh, you know what? Mine are on the rack. Let's see. Hmm. It just says uh, ginger jeans on the pattern pieces. I don't... <laughs> yeah. I knew what you, exactly what you meant. That was, that was pretty cute, though. starting to sound like um what's that show um on hulu <laughs> it's not midwives but um with offred um based on the famous book oh my god you guys i'm tired i'm hungry mine is right here I said that to myself out loud, basically. Like, mine is right here. Where's my little... I hope that's big enough. I think I could make it deeper, maybe? Hand me a sale, thank you. Yeah, hand me a sale, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not call the midwife, but <laughs> it just all of a sudden made me think of Handmaid's Tale. I'm not caught up caught up on that, so no one say anything. <laughs> I don't definitely don't watch enough TV to stay up on things. I thought that show would be so hard to watch, you know. But it's actually really engaging. The characters are really good. I like things about people. All right, so let's see here. I could probably do this one, but can I do this one? Yeah. We just have the sleeves and the binding left. Wait, which one am I doing? This one right here, right? Right here, right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought my husband let go of Hulu because he was like, do you mind if I do that? I was like, yeah, you can let go. I'm not watching it on TV. And then um, recently he said something about it. He's like, do you want me, to, do you mind if I get rid of that? I was like, I thought you did get rid of that. I haven't been watching the one show I like on there. <laughs> he was like, oh, no, I didn't get rid of that. This is the center back one. You know, really, maybe it would have been nicer to put the two flowers right here, you know? I can't even get this apart, it's so sticky. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll just use this for sleeves. <laughs> no spoilers. 
how much am I, how willing, how uh, inefficient on the fabric am I willing to be, you know? I started, I watched Shrill too. I, thought, I really liked that show. I was like, okay, well now that I know I have this, I'm gonna kind of catch up on a few things. <laughs> the only time I really watch things is here. Like there's a few times I'll sew things off camera and I'll watch it then. That's when I watch TV. All right, so I'm thinking like this. Flowers on my shoulders. Let's see if I can get it. Sticky fabric, but um, so pretty. I like the, I like these fall colors in there. I'm doing this, I'm cutting it off and then flipping it so I can see my lines. Because remember, I actually haven't cut this this pattern out yet. So the um, I don't have the actual clear outline. So I'm sewing this on uh, Wednesday, Heather. Because I'm not going to be here Thursday and Saturday. I was looking for a um, quicker thing to be able to do in two streams today and Wednesday since the ash jeans kind of landed on a weird, finished on a weird day. You guys, I think I lost all of part one of ash jeans, all of it. It's completely gone. It's not on YouTube. And um, if you go on Twitch and look at my pa recent past streams, it'll show you, um, what looks like it and it's like 22 minutes long and it's just this weird piece of it it's such a bummer I was a really good sewing stream of those jeans I'm pretty sad I, I lost them <laughs> oh that's funny yeah, well, snap. Oh, Dairy Girls, that's cute, too. Oh, do you, if you watch British TV, do you like the Detectorists? I love the Detectorists. Oh, that, I think that is the, the, a really great show. All right, I'm going to do, this is upside down like this. I'm going to do a sleeve here. I hate to say it, but I am kind of uh, treating this shirt like a muslin. I um, have to admit that. That's the back, front, front. No, let's make sure both got slit. Yeah, they did. Okay. Carnival Royal looks stressful. Is it stressful? Wait, this one is. This is the right side of the fabric and this is the front and that's the back okay so it's front okay, so now I need one like this <laughs> yeah Nancy you gotta feed those dogs <laughs> Okay, that was the front, and this is the wrong side. So I need to do it face down like this. Kind of going for the motif. <laughs> yeah, do you watch Detectorists? It's so cute. I love that. I don't know if there's a new season lately, but there there's a few of them. And it's about met, these guys who do metal detectors in um, the English countryside looking for, like, you know, bits from ancient England. 
Um, but they're 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 just they're it's just cute. It's not real. It's like it's a fictional story and everything. It's really cute. Um, I don't know. I don't watch a whole lot anymore, so I can't really I can't really speak to that. I like things on HBO too. I like Succession and um, uh, I don't watch network TV a lot, so I don't know. I, there's probably some good shows on there. I just don't know about it. Which on? Wait, wait, wait. Um, the Detectress. What is that on? I may watch it on Acorn. Shows the same. Oh, Jack Ryan is good? Okay, okay. Oh, you're a, a murderino, Julia? <laughs> is this my, is this a pattern piece? No. Okay. Did I do my back yoke? I did, right? Yeah, I did my back yoke because that was the, um, All right, yeah. We just need some binding. You're a metering or two. That's oh, awesome. Fist bump. <laughs> yeah, Ryan was too. I heard a few of those because she'd play them in the office. They were fun. She went and saw them a few times. Same with Kirby. She's here in the stream sometimes. She's a murderino. I love how that's a masculine word, but most of the viewers are female. You know, like if it were Spanish. Um, the selvage is really tight on this, so I'm just going to trim it off for the binding. There's a new sewing podcast called, um, Stitch Please. And the first episode aired this week, I think. I haven't listened to it yet, but it looks pretty good. I think the first episode was back to school sewing. Um... What do I watch? I I really like The Walking Dead. I kind of got this fascination with zombies a few, like a while ago when I first saw Shaun of the Dead. And I was like, wait a minute. This is so funny. <laughs> I kind of kind of got fascinated with zombies. That's kind of a funny thing because they're kind of an oxymoron. They're undead, you know? Oh, really? Lisa, like, what do you mean? What happened to it? Are they having trouble like me? <laughs> um, I'm just making some binding right now, and uh, I just cut the selvage off because it's tight. These little lines here, because it's like extra woven there, I don't really know the technical term. Uh, they're, it's, it's weird. It's like gives it some structure this way, but you can see how loose it is here. So I'm just trying to keep it nice and stable while I make the binding. It's nice seeing the lines. You can really tell you're on the bias then. You're gonna get confused. Oh, Walking Dead did? Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's gory. I got really wrapped up in the people. And I sometimes, I got mad at it. I, I turned it off for like two years. I was like, nope, you guys, this is not, a, I can't stand this person. This guy's too scary for me. <laughs> You get creeped out. <laughs> if, you know, the more you, the deeper you get into that show, um, it's less about the zombies. The people are the scary people. Yeah, that would be great, Jan. All right, so the binding on this is one inch. I was about to cut this my default one and three eighths because I've cut so much of that. So um, you want a narrower um, binding because it's all going to one side of the garment, not wrapping around the edge where you'd need extra. So um, we're just gonna do the one inch, so. <laughs> I'm gonna do, yeah, one inch. And then I'm probably gonna do a little bit, a little bit wider for when I do the sleeve because I may have trouble getting around the um, armhole, the seam allowance on the armhole. What weight? Hey, Lexi, how's it going? Hi, Tamara. Which weights are you talking about that I use or someone else? Someone on the sewing bee watch uses. <laughs> I 
You feel you do feel passionately on that. Oh, my irons. These? Yeah, yeah. They're just oh, antique irons. They work great. You know, when you have to like you can buy these, but um you have to pay to ship something that's heavy. Uh and these are in your antique store, right? And they're kind of meta. Yeah. And they usually cost, depending on what your region is like, they're anywhere from eight to twenty-five dollars. I like the one with the handle though, so don't skimp out on not getting the handle because I have one that there's no handle and it's uh, shaped like an eye. Um, and sometimes when I go to grab it, I'll go, I'll let, I'll like slip off of it, and my nails will break off. The tips will break off. Yeah, Lisa, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah, so, um, anyway, they work really good. I just love how heavy they are. I like that they're, I like that they're pointed, too, so when I want to get close to the edge like that, you know? But just use what works. This one's a little wider. I don't need this much, but I'm just going to do a little bit. We're doing the Scout tea today, Lexi. And look, I got this fabric from Hearts. I told them about the coupon code. They were all excited. They thanked you guys. So yeah, you guys remember that the hearts coupon code is so so 10 for 10% off. Yeah, I have a wooden handle one too. I love that one. You watch the sewing bee Deb. Where's Deb located? Yeah. Classic Night of the Living Dead. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so this one's narrower and this one's wider. And uh, maybe I'll just do this. How about I do something less like that and I'll, I'll clip it so that I know that's different. So. Um, we'll just save this just in case we need a little bit more. And we have all of our, so we're making this little scout tee and we've done quite a bit of changes for not having done a muslin. Putting a little yoke across the top and keeping the top sheer the sleeves sheer. I'm lining the front and the back. And then we're doing this uh, hem with the scoop, but it's gonna come to the side seam directly rather than like a Oxford. I'm just reiterating for everybody. So that's what we're up to. I can line the bottom and then I can just wear a bra with it without the bra showing through because this is quite sheer. The fabric's a little like grabby. So um, I'm just gonna sew it directly to the poplin that I, that I um, picked. Dish Bell TV. I forget the channel. Hmm. Are you in the States, Deb? Yeah, Lexi, I was going to do a scalloped him mainly because I was so inspired by yours. And then I went and looked at the Scout T um, hashtag, which I think is Grainline Scout. And there was a few with that scallop. I really wanted it. And then they got, they were, you know, someone brought up a good point. They're like, the fabric might be a little busy for the scallop. I had a bunch of drawings. Let's see. We talked a few things. We did a full bust adjustment, um, which we tried one, you know, like I didn't end up doing it online, but um, I taught them how to do that. I thought about doing a little Peter Pan collar, which is a nice little boxy shape, a little wrap front with a flutter sleeve. Um, this is what I was really gonna do right here, was the yoke, the sheer, scalloped hem, regular sleeve, shorter, um, and then, or like a straight hem. And then when I drew this, I was just going to show people this idea of doing this. Actually, it didn't have a yoke. My first one didn't have a yoke right there. So, yeah, so there's lots of ways you can customize the Scout Tee. I've never made one before. When we dropped the armhole, added some ease to the cap, not gathers, but just ease. I made a flutter sleeve that stops shy of the armhole, like probably right about here. And then uh, scooped, the, shaped the hem too. And then I added a center back pleat too. Ah, yeah, she's not in the States, Julia. Julia's like, we lost her. She's like Googling it. Uh oh, did I lose you guys? Twitch is struggling right now. Well, um, we are at the end here. I don't know if Twitch is still is working or not, but it looks like it's not. I hope it's working. Anywho, 
Um, so I'll be sewing this on uh, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, and you can join me. Should be fun. I did a lot of alterations. There'll be some really fun sewing techniques on this one, and some things that I've done haven't done on stream before. It just paused. Oh, okay, Sophie. How weird. That's so weird. I don't see it on there. Yeah, oh, now I see it. That's weird, and now it stopped. Yeah, that's so weird. It says I'm live. Okay. Well, sorry, guys. Yeah, Twitch died. All right, well, um, I'm going to get going anyway. It's been a while now. So thank you so much for coming. Sorry that I lost you guys on Twitch. It's back now. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe me? Maybe. No one's here in the building, so now it's pausing again. I can see it. It's spinning. Anyone know a streaming expert? Tell them to call me. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a fantastic weekend. I will see you on Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific. And um, I'll type in the Twitch chat that too. Um, I'll sew in it Wednesday uh, Pacific. Sorry if I'm spelling it wrong. I cannot see the screen. And um, thank you so much, you guys. It was a really great stream. I really love uh, doing the pattern drafting stream. So thank you so much for coming. And oh, look, yeah, Twitch just totally died. Or maybe it's putting an ad in for you guys. Maybe that's what it is. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. And I will see you guys soon. Um, thanks so much for coming. So bye. I need theme music, don't I? <laughs> Bye.